Deputy Minister Galamba. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for us to open this event to launch officially the energy efficiency mortgage label. We are living in uh, very special times where all of us are asking ourselves what we can do to improve the situation. Um, I have the honor today to speak on behalf of a community who is trying to put on the table of the European Commission a proposal on how to move forward and how to guide the financial services industry towards sustainability and digitalization. <coughs> I think it's a challenge for all of us and um, our community feels this event as a, an achievement, a result of a long journey where we try to find the right compromise to involve a multi-sectoral consensus around a label, a lighthouse helping to guide consumer, lenders and investors in what are now very uncharted waters and stormy waters. We all know that we have to give responses in order to defend the values of the European Union and the social inclusion of our uh, Union. We believe that uh, financial services can play an extremely important role because we are in between the financial markets and the house and the, the landlord, the household, who are taking decisions for their homes. We are there also in a crucial moment when they decide Chain to door. renovate their houses. So we feel the duty and the responsibility to give response maybe before other stakeholders. We have to take the lead and propose solution. And that's what we are trying to do today in this event. We felt that we couldn't wait any longer. Our economy is under serious stress. For the first time, in, I think, in the history of the humankind, we are in front of a shock on the demand side, a shock on the supply side, and a pandemic, and we don't know exactly when the, the pandemic will end. Yeah. Our labor market is changing. Yeah. Our environmental risk perception is changing. We are here today to propose not only a label, but we are here to propose a, go a market governance machine. We have to work hand in hand with other stakeholders to build a roadmap with solution for citizens. We believe that Europe is uh, rooted on giving opportunities. We don't believe in the Europe of punishment or we believe in the role of Europe to highlight the opportunity and let citizens perceive the opportunity cost of not taking action. Today, I would like to express a big thank you, first of all, to the speakers, which will be with, uh, who will be with us today and guide us during the discussion. But also, I would like to thank especially all the banks who have been working so hard in the last five years to achieve a compromise we all know that sometimes compromise is not the perfection. We are here not only to present the work done, but we are here to ask support. We cannot succeed alone. We need the support of the builders industry. We need the support of the utilities. We need the support of the local authorities. We need the support of the member states of the European Union. We need the support of the investor community. We need the support of the valuers. We need the support of our global friends. This initiative is rooted on a global ambitions. We want to propose solution to the entire world, and we are very glad to have the support and the interest of our friends in Australia, in Singapore, in Japan, in Brazil. This is a global problem. We have to find a global solution, and we need to take a le the leadership as a community. So, all in all, what we are proposing is a governance mechanism, which is giving a solution, which is a very concrete instrument, a label which can help consumer lenders and investors to take decisions. What we are proposing today, Commissioner, I want to be also very humble. It's just a starting point. It's an achievement for a lot of us, but this is a, just a fragile starting point. I ask also you, 
12 months of tolerance to allow our banks to disclose data, to improve, to decide what is the right bar. Now we are starting with an agreement which was achieved a few years ago, two years ago, under the EMAP initiative, which was on Horizon 2020. But we all know that it's already outdated because taxonomy will be arrived very soon. We all know that environmental risk is not only energy efficiency. COVID is changing this landscape. Our house are becoming more and more, more important for us. Improving the quality of our house is not only energy efficiency, but it means also the quality of the hair and the space where we live and we grow our kids is the fundamental investment where we can make the difference. We also know that the renovation way needs capital market to support this effort. We cannot rely only on public finance, on taxpayer money. We need to do our job and we are here today with conviction to offer our service. Allow me to say that we have to search again the beauty of our cities. We should walk in our cities and appreciate the beautiful landscape of our cities. We have to redesign our cities for a more sustainable future for our kids. How we can imagine the beauty of cities like Amsterdam, Paris, Berlin, Florence, Venice, Lisbon, without the support of the financial industry? Can we the link the beautiful landscape of Paris from the Credit Foncier or Berlin? We have the Pfannbriefe or the share in the bond markets in, um, in Amsterdam. But how we can imagine Venice without the strong financial sector and insurance sector that was born actually in Venice? Or how we can imagine the Renaissance without the support of the bankers and the Medici family. We need to rebuild the green renaissance. We need to give hope and opportunity to our citizens. This is our duty, not only for our kids, where we, we hone them a better future, but we own this also to, to, to the people who dreamt the European dream. The Europe dreamt by Altiero Spinelli and Ventotene was a Europe of hope. And we want to continue to do this and give opportunity to the middle class to have a better future, a better house, and improve the quality. That's why we need you, we need the builders. We are not expert, experts of builders. We have a very concrete request which will help us in finding data. We need to have access to EPC information. We need to see the, builder, uh, the buildings as a system where we need to understand where are the risks and how we can improve the quality of the life of the citizens. I'm here today only speaker of the community who is trying to make the difference. I don't know, Daniel, if you can go to the list of the banks that uh, are participating. I would like to name one by one because those banks have done an act of trust and respect for our initiative. They have been working hard and in only three weeks, we were, be, we were being able to collect 23 key stakeholders in Europe. They are national banks, national champions, local banks. We have an heterogeneity in this group of banks, which is representing the willingness to Europe and the financial services of Europe to change. And we all know how difficult it is to change when we don't have a clear vision of what is gonna happen. I would like to name one by one. We have, I'm very honored to have Alpha Bank from Romania who contribute not only as a Romanian bank, but as an entire group of the region, which includes Greece, Albania, uh, Montenegro, and all the, all the region. We have Banca Nazionale Lavoro of the BNP Paribas Group. Uh, a big thank you to BNL, but also to the entire BNP uh, group. Uh, we have Banca Sella, we have Banco BPM, we have BNP Paribas Fortis, Belgium. We have Caja Rural de Navarra, we have City Bank, we have uh, Credit Agricole. Daniel, I don't know if you can move on. We have Hello Bank from Czech Republic. We have a Hema Group uh, on, on Sweden. We are also having, and I'm very honored, a lot of uh, new providers which are using 
new di digital solution like blockchain and other solutions that could really change this market. We have Intesa San Paolo, we have Jungo from, from the Netherlands, we have Onesto from Belgium again, we have OP Mortgage Bank from Finland, we have PKO Bank from Poland, we have Stabilo Asset Management from Sweden, we have Sutirol Sparkassel from Italy, we have Swedbank uh, from Sweden, we have OCI from Portugal, we have uh, Unicredit, and we have OCI from Spain, and we have False Bank, and we have VOB from the Slovak Republic. A big thank you to all of you for the trust, and we know that we are building a new infrastructure, a new market infrastructure, and uh, in the coming months, we will be working hard to build the label in a way that will provide transparency to consumer, to consumer in first place, but also to investors and to authority. This system will be managed by a governance system. As I said, we will have the first label committee in June, where all the major markets will be represented, but also we are inviting other stakeholders like builders experts, like rating agencies, like investors to share their views. And the label will be the result of a market consensus. So we will move up the bar, we will move up the requirements in alignment with what the market will decide will be the most appropriate level in terms of quality. Um, with this, I would like to conclude my intervention. I would like to thank all the banks for joining us, all the speakers for being today, and thank the Commission for the strong support that we have had from the European Commission via the Horizon 2020 project, but also from the staff of uh, the entire European Commission. A big thank you from all of us. With these words of welcome, Commissioner Simpson, I would like to give you the floor and thank you again for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you and uh, good morning. Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, dear panelists, um, it is a pleasure to be here with you today and it is an honor for me to participate in the official launch of the Energy Efficient uh, Mortgage Label. The European Green Deal is our sustainable growth strategy and we aim to become the first climate neutral content by 2050. The path there will be made up of consistent steps building towards a decarbonized economy. And one of those steps is our climate target plan. By 2030, we want at least a 55% reduction in emissions. And that achievement will require 350 billion euro per year of investments in the energy sector compared with the last decade. A huge amount to match out a uh, huge transformation. Energy efficiency should be among the main investment areas, and particularly uh, in the building sector. According to the impact assessment for the Climate Target Plan, the EU needs to reduce emissions from buildings by 60% compared to 1990 levels. Europe's, Europe's buildings are unique. Their strength lies in their diversity. Uh, they reflect uh, the culture and history of our continent. And luckily for us, most of them will still be here in 2050. But that also brings into light a unique weakness. The majority of uh, Europe's buildings, 75%, um, were built before this century, and they tend to be inefficient. So our buildings are responsible for around 40% of our energy consumption and 36% of our greenhouse gas emissions. And to ha we, ha we have a chance. Um, at reaching our goal of a climate neutral Europe, but we have no choice but to massively scale up building renovation. And this is why last October the Commission launched the Renovation Wave Initiative. We are aiming to at least double the annual uh, renovation rate of buildings uh, by 2030. And right now the rate stagnates at around 1% on average of our total building stock. So, the leap in rates is enormous. We are talking about renovating at least 35 million buildings uh, by 2030. And when we consider the true scale of the work involved, the next question has to be about financing. The scale of work is immense. So the financing needs to achieve our objectives um, reflect that. 700 
50 billion euro was dedicated to the next generation EU recovery fund agreed by leaders last year. And this can go a long way towards transforming our building stock. Together with the multi-annual financial framework, all EU in instruments have to comply with the objective of EU climate neutrality by 2050 and the new 2030 climate targets. Yet, greatest challenges are rarely dealt with uh, through public financing alone. And these funds must be amplified through private sector funding to reach the levels we need. To do that, the Commission can help uh, pave the way for greater private sector financing by providing clear investment signals, uh, by setting up a stable regulatory framework, and by setting up uh, clear long-term objectives through its uh, sustainable financing initiative. And we are currently preparing uh, the ground for a renewed sustainable finance strategy and for a EU green bond standard. Meanwhile, we can only expect banks, insurers, investors, but also companies and public authorities to invest if they can identify which activities and investments are sustainable and avoid greenwashing. We have made it uh, easier for them to do this with the proposed EU classification system or taxonomy. And what the EU taxonomy will do is translate the EU screen objectives into criteria for investment purposes and guiding market participants in their investment decisions. What it will not do is uh, prescribe where to invest, but it will offer a guide to those who want to invest in top of the class green activities. And uh, through the taxonomy, we will provide the basis for EU green bond standards, eco labels for retail financial products, and other green standards and labels. The first draft delegated act on taxonomy uh, attracted a lot of attention and generated over 46,000 replies. Currently, the Commission is assessing the feedback received and is carefully considering the adjustments uh, that might be needed um, to the proposed criteria. The adoption of the um, Delegated Act uh, was postponed um, and um, until um, the upcoming spring. Because given the scale of the work ahead, the potential of the mortgages as financial products to support energy efficient uh, investments is coming to the fore. Uh, the acquisition phase um, of a real estate property is uh, a perfect opportunity to undertake renovation works. In 2019 alone, 1.3 trillion of new mortgages have been issued uh, in the European Union and the UK. Um, 1.3 worth, uh, euros worth mortgages. And in this light, uh, it is obvious that uh, the energy efficient mortgage label is a really fundamental contribution to the renovation wave for Europe. It is um, innovative, it is sustainable, and it could allow citizens to access financial support at better interest rate, allowing for more investment into deeper renovations. Um, we have a long track record of cooperation with the banking sector on these kind of uh, matters. And this began um, with the creation of the Energy Efficiency Financial Institutions Group in 2013. This informal group of financial institutions uh, shares their knowledge and experience and has uh, led to the creation of Europe's largest database of uh, energy efficiency projects. And with it, we get a, a clear idea of the added value of energy efficiency investments. And they have shown us uh, the correlation between the energy efficiency of a home and the lower probability of default. Beyond this, we know the importance of helping the market identify the key players who can aggregate uh, energy efficiency investments and bring them to another level. The energy efficient mortgage initiative is a very good example here. And I am impressed by how many banks and support organizations uh, were mobilized and how far we managed to advance uh, in just a few years. Finally, a uh, word on one-stop shops. 
Home energy innovation is not always uh, the obvious choice. It comes with a high number of stakeholders and administrative steps, and of course, um, this has an impact on the costs. We see more and more one for one initiatives developing uh, integrated home renovation services, uh, where the homeowner is assisted at all steps of the renovation process. And one stop shop can be run by the public or the private sector. But the important fact is that uh, they integrate all set actors along, uh, along the renovation value. And uh, integrate financing as one of their core activities. They are an essential part of the solution to renovate the European housing stock. So the Commission has helped to put in place and co-finance several one-stop shops notably through the Elena facility and the use of cohesion funds. But uh, as energy renovations are needed in every district of every member state, we need to develop a pan-European network of uh, local one-stop shops. A new ecosystem is emerging and uh, the Energy Efficient Mortgage Initiative is a great opportunity for financial institutions to take their full part into it. This is an integrated approach based on a review of the regulatory framework, including the energy efficiency directive, the energy performance of buildings directive, and of course, uh, all of the um, planning policies. Ladies and gentlemen, last 12 months have shed a, a new light on the true importance of our homes. They are no longer just where we dwell. They are our new offices, schools, and refuge from current events, and even more reason uh, for them to be safe, healthy, and comfortable. And even more reason to put our best food forward for upscaling energy generations across Europe. The energy efficient mortgage label goes a long way towards doing that. So thank you for that and thank you for your attention. Commissioner, thank you very much for the kind words and for the kind support. As I said, we are implementing our initiative locally with the market hubs. We have a strong support at the local level. And um, the idea of the one stop shop is what we are following to try to help consumer to find all the information about private sector and capital market solution in one single place. So thank you very much for indicating the way on how we are we, we have to put our energy to design a roadmap for the market. It's also a great honor to have today with us um, Deputy Minister and Secretary of State for Energy, uh, Galamba, from the uh, Portuguese Presidency. Um, we feel that the priorities of the uh, Portuguese Presidency are changing um, the way on how we have to structure the capital markets and how we have to implement the Green Deal. With uh, this a very short introduction, I would like to welcome and thank uh, Deputy Minister Galamba for being with us. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I am very grateful for the opportunity to present the priorities of the Portuguese Presidency of the Council of the European Union, which started on January 1st, and to contribute to this important debate on energy efficiency. Portugal assumed the Presidency of the Council at a time when Europe is still dealing with the pandemic and its social and economic consequences. The challenges we face are evident, but we are aware that it is also a crucial moment for Europe's recovery. We have the vision, the programs, and the financial instruments to make progress. Focusing on sustainability, we will have the double reserve of enabling us to achieve our climate and environmental objectives and promoting the development of our economy, ensuring a fair and inclusive recovery. The Portuguese presidency has made it a priority to promote the EU as a leader in climate action. Within this framework, five global priorities were defined. Resilient, social, green, digital, and global. A prepared Europe to face crisis situations, mainly through the recovery of the economy through national plans, reinforcement and investment in strategic autonomy, promoting an autonomous and competitive industry. A stronger social Europe in the context of economic recovery, preserving the European social model and strengthening cooperation in the area of health. A green Europe, recovering the economy on a sustainable and inclusive basis, 
accelerating the decarbonization of the economy in line with the new targets approved by the Council and better adapted to the effects of climate change. A digital Europe, accelerating the digi digital agenda and innovation as engines of economic recovery and ensuring European digital autonomy. A global Europe, strengthening multilateralism, partnerships, and Europe's role in the global world. In this context, we will contribute to the development and implementation of several of the strategies and initiatives provided for in the European Green Deal. This is the time to act for a just, a green, and a digital recovery. The renovation wave is one of the priority themes of the Portuguese presidency in the field of energy. We see this strategy as a key element to achieve the ambitious 55% emission reduction target for 2030 and to achieve climate neutrality by 2050. This emission initiative aims to accelerate the renovation of buildings at the European level and will have a crucial role in the recovery of the economy, supporting the renovation of buildings, contributing to the improvement of energy efficiency, boosting the circular economy and promoting well-being. A renovation wave that enhances energy efficiency, tackles recovery and promotes welfare and social inclusion. With this in mind, Portugal has implemented the Directive EU 2018-844 of the European Parliament of the Council of 30 of May 2018 that amended the Directive 2010-31 on the energy performance of buildings towards the goal of energy transition in the 2021-2030 and carbon neutrality under the Paris Agreement commitment. For this purpose, it was created a set of rules were created to guarantee the construction and use of new buildings with almost zero um, energy needs, with a very high energy performance and whose energy needs, almost zero and very small, are largely covered by energy from renewable sources. Although it is important to have criteria in place for new construction, it is the existing stock and sub uh, subsequent uh, renovation that are of paramount importance to meet the objectives of carbon neutrality and energy transition. So a long-term long strategy to support the renovation by 2050 of residential and non-residential buildings, both public and private, was developed according to a roadmap with indicative measures and objectives for the 2030, 40, and 50 horizon. This long-term strategy is uh, undeniable, uh, an undeniable contribution to the fulfillment of the energy and climate goals assumed by Portugal in the sense of carbon neutrality and the promotion of energy efficiency and transformation of existing buildings, such as MZ buildings, by promoting rehabilitation as the main form of intervention at the level of buildings and urban development. To this end, the long-term strategy foresees, among others, the creation or reorientation of the financing lines for the energy renovation of the buildings covered, in line with the energy performance and, and sustainability criteria and not forgetting the reduction of cost with energy and remaining consumption and support to households with less resources for the energy renovation of their homes. On the other hand, the long-term strategy asserts itself as a mechanism for the quality of life in housing and for the growth of national economy as it promotes labor productivity, the reduction of healthcare costs, the valorization of heritage and localities, to the extending, uh, extending the useful life and increasing the resilience of buildings and promoting the construction and rehabilitation sectors, thus generating job and investment opportunities with evident and reinforced benefits for the economic and social recovery process in face of the epidemiological situation caused by COVID-19. The Portuguese long-term strategy is likewise duly um, aligned and articulated with European Ecological Pact and the European Recovery Plan, with priority initiative called the Renovation Wave and aims to be an active mechanism of intervention among others, the provision of financing instruments that aim to increase the rate and quality of renovation of existing buildings and thus help to decarbonize buildings across the European space. Therefore, the launch of the Energy Efficient Markets Initiative represents an important contribution to the promotion of investment in the energy efficiency of buildings through the aggregation, processing, and access to data for the connection with the respective market value and credit risk. In fact, the EEM label represents an important step in promoting this green wave and aligning the incentives of the financial and banking sector with the sustainability goals of member states and the European Union. 
its implementation will strengthen credit markets and financing mechanisms with clear benefits for all due to the decrease of risk and adequate and effective solutions. Robust guidance directing capital flows to sustainable investments that do no harm is critical to fight the climate and economic crisis, accelerating the energy transition and ensuring sustainable development. The sustainability taxonomy is an essential financial instrument in the green and digital recovery from COVID-19 crisis to guide investors in the identification of environmental sustainable activities and to apply the do no harm principle of the European Green Deal. It is fundamental to give the right signal and to indicate the best the best path to investors so that the European Union can achieve climate neutrality by 2050 and transform our territories into more resilient to the impact of climate change. I hope this event provides an important and necessary forum to debate the key challenges that the energy transition is imposing for the next decade. The European Union must be prepared to take a leadership role, and Portugal is committed to supporting Europe. Uh, objectives to reinforce our common ambition and to guarantee an energy transition that supports the path towards climate neutrality and a just transition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. It was a great honor to listen to you today. We completely share your priorities and we think that um, the challenge that we have in front of our eyes is immense. We have to renovate 200 million of dwellings in Europe and we have to support disposable income of families. We all know that improving the energy performance of the houses can really represent a massive, um, dispo uh, um, a massive um, relief for the families in terms of disposable income. And uh, during these days with COVID, this has a serious implication in terms of financial stability, in terms of uh, non-performing loans, and also capacity of every single family to have an horizon, to have hope for the future and make their most important investment, the house, more resilient and more qualitative for their future. Thank you very much for being with us uh, this morning. Um, with this, I would like to introduce the first panel of discussion, uh, kindly moderated by Stefano Grassi, Head of Cabinet of Commissioner Simpson. Um, it's a great honor to have all of you um in this panel this panel is called institutional panel because it's uh, collecting the views of the different institutions who had an active participation in our advisory council which is a, a fundamental component of, of our governance of the label the, the label has a governance which is uh, on one hand based on the market and on the other hand based on the views of key institution who can act as a facilitator in implementing the label. I would like to thank all the institutions that are involved in this panel because their views, their contribution has been fundamental to guide the market towards the right direction. Um, Stefano, it's my uh, great pleasure to pass you the floor and uh, I'd like you introduce the different speakers. Thank you again for your kind participation. Thank you, Luca, and good morning to everybody. I'm delighted to welcome you all to this panel on the energy efficient mortgage uh, label facilitating the renovation wave and supporting the Green Deal. It is quite rare for the Commission to be in the position of a moderator uh, because normally we are in the hot seat being grilled with questions. But today I have a chance to be um, in a panel with a great selection of speakers with strong expertise in the mortgage financing uh, markets an expert who can help us cast a real light on how the label can truly help the renovation wave and the Green Deal. I think we have a real broad variety uh, in terms of international and national institution, uh, experts coming from private and the public sector, and also I think a very good we have all of them have an extraordinary experience on how mortgage markets work, what consumers need, uh, what financial institutions and capital can do, supervise or expect. So I do look forward uh, to this exchange with our speakers and to get their perspective on how the energy efficient mortgage level can help advance the innovation way. 
But let me first introduce you briefly our panelists today. Uh, first, Berthe Brunleon. She's Director of Operations in Iberia from the European Investment Bank. Luis De Mayo, Director at the OECD Economics Department in Paris. Gabor Giura, Head of Sustainable Finance Department at the Central Bank of Hungary, Budapest. And Dane Kiriakopoulou, Chief Economist and Director of the Research at the Official Monetary and Financial Institutions Forum and also chaired uh, the organization Sustainable Policy Institute. The last of our panelists is Sean Kidney, CEO of Climate Bonds Initiative. So we do have a great panel here. And uh, without further ado, I would like to uh, start uh, uh giving them the floor and getting their angles into our discussion so let me first turn to to bertie and to the eib uh the eib uh, bertie has been a front runner in the green deal you announced first the intention to be europe's climate bank uh almost two years ago and you announced that you will dedicate 50% of a portfolio to green investment. Uh, you have a long-standing experience in, in energy efficiency, and now you're pioneering a truly integrated approach from technical assistance, project development, grants, and loans, different financial products. Now the uh, yes, good morning. Thank you, Stefano, and thank you also to the European Mortgage Federation for the invitation to this uh, event. Um, I, I did prepare uh, some slides, but uh, I would like to focus more concretely on your question, so I may only pick uh, two or three as a visual support to, to, to my reply. Um, um, I don't know how... how how this could be put on screen, um, if at all. If not, then uh, we'll <laughs> just. Uh, we we see we see um, the slides. But... The EIB is... Yes, that's perfect. Um, good. The EIB is is the bank of the European Union, and it is owned by all EU member states. Uh, and we are there to finance viable projects in support of uh, EU uh, policies and objectives uh, to foster competitiveness, convergence, uh, employment, and inclusion. Now, in recent years, as you have uh, well set out in your intro introduction, uh, in line with the political priorities and climate ambitions of the EU, uh, the EIB has been accentuating its role as a climate bank. Now, key actions um, of this um, a new or reinforced strategy include the commitment that all our new EIB group financing operations be compliant with the, uh, with the Paris Alliance. Um, we intend to increase the share of our financings, um, the annual volumes, uh, to uh, from, from the current 30% uh, percent to 50% uh, by 2025. And we have uh, our board of uh, directors has approved a new energy lending policy under which we will, for instance, uh, abandon the financing of uh, traditional fossil fuel uh, energy projects. Uh, and we also will continue to, uh, in our leading role as a, as a green bond uh, issuer. Now, our new energy lending policy also refers to uh, the reno renovation wave as endorsed by the European Commission and as uh, further defined in member states' uh, national long-term strategies for the renovation of their existing building stock. Uh, now, the renovation wave, we consider this as a unique opportunity and uh, for a green recovery after COVID and, and certainly a necessity. Uh, and it will bring benefits on several fronts um, in terms of reduction of energy bills uh, for homeowners and tenants, uh, in terms of addressing energy poverty, uh, contribution to the decarbonization for sure, and the generation of employment. Uh, as the Commissioner and the Deputy Minister have already uh, set out, uh, there is undoubtedly a huge investment gap uh, in the energy efficient renovation of the existing housing stock in Europe. Now, it will be key to, um, uh, to make sure that these investments really happen. Uh, so in order to, to, to tackle this, um, this can be facilitated by first of all, regulatory, fiscal and legal uh, measures, well, the latter, for instance, in relation to homeowner associations. Um, 
through awareness raising for the benefits of energy efficient uh, investments. Um, when economic times are good, disposable income is there and energy prices are low, the awareness may not necessarily be very acute. Um, and in the area of finance, uh, I would like to highlight the need uh, for suitable aggregation mechanisms or structures because these investments are very granular, are tend to be small and many. Uh, so in order to provide for efficient financing mechanisms, uh, we, we need uh, suitable aggregation uh, mechanisms. And there, uh, the use of public funds, be it in the form of direct grants, but also uh, certainly through financing loans and guarantees, from institutions and promotional institutions such as ours um, can serve and help to attract additional private financing um, to, to energy efficient project, uh, energy efficiency projects. Now, in this context, if, uh, initiatives uh, like uh, EMAP and the EEM label that is being launched today are, are clearly very uh, important steps and, and very beneficial steps in, in this direction as they will facilitate uh, financial flows to this much needed energy renovation of the existing housing stocks and thereby uh, facilitate the achievements of the uh, European Commission's objectives. So let, let me congratulate um, you, uh, the European Mortgage Federation and the participating banks to, to this initiative and label. Um, as you also referred to, the ERB has substantial experience in lending uh, to energy efficiency investments and projects and also in the management of uh, various uh, European Commission supported facilities and programs, such as uh, project finance for energy efficiency, uh, the Smart Finance for Smart Buildings Initiative, the European Fund for Strategic Investments, the so-called Juncker Plan, uh, and advisory activities such as uh, ELENA. Uh, you, may, you may forward to, to page number six um, in that respect. We, we, can, we can support energy efficiency projects through a variety of products and structures, including loans, guarantees, financial instruments, either directly for larger projects or indirectly um, in the case of more granular portfolios of smaller size loans by partnering with financial intermediaries or creating uh, structures in which we blend uh, so resources from several, um, let's say funds from several sources, um, which can be from member states, from the European Commission and EIB group uh, resources. We have adapted the uh, terms and eligibility of our financing to the needs uh, of energy efficiency investments. And examples of this are that uh, this is an area, one of the very few areas where the bank uh, except individual households as final beneficiaries. Um, the loans also do have a longer tenor to match the long tenors of, of, of mortgage loans. And uh, in certain cases, um, notably where uh, the NZEP uh, plus standard is being employed, we can find it's up to 75% of the product cost um, and thereby help to secure a large part of the necessary financing. And we also offer complementary advisory and technical assistance to help beneficiaries, but also intermediary institutions um, in, in their financing initiatives. Uh, we have further developed a, a green energy loan label, um, which we will carry forward also in the sustainability area. Um, and um, the purpose of this green energy loan label uh, of ERB is to signal, to create a signaling effect for the quality of these projects. Um, that have also been analyzed by our internal engineers and economists. Now, in our, uh, to close, in our ambition to incentivize borrowers to improve the energy efficiency of their uh, buildings uh, or, or, or build new ones, we are clearly aligned with EMAP. Uh, and as a result of our participation in this initiative, we have already originated first operations which carry the EM label. And one example is uh, with OSI. Uh, where we also have representatives in the next panel, uh, and so uh, we're very proud of uh, this uh, operation. There are more promising developments, uh, and we're looking forward to um, the, for instance, the subst substantiation of a lower risk profile of energy efficient mortgages, uh, which will be very, very relevant also in the context of uh, banks' climate risk assessments uh, and uh, related uh, uh, pricing uh, for its assets. Thank you very much.
Stefano, I think you're muted. Stefano, I think that we have some audio problem. Yes. Bertie, I was uh, I was just stressing how uh, uh, complete and interesting was your your overview and uh, uh, the, the impressive firepower and the range of tools and financial products the AB has is, is uh, crucial to make things happen in, in this sector. And But you preempted already my follow-up questions. I wanted to ask you from your experience in, in the Spanish and the, the Portuguese market, uh, if you can cool point to uh, a practical example, mm -hmm. you already pointed to the UCI, so maybe we go back to this in the final remarks. Uh, I will, in the interest of, of time, and I'm sorry I have to be the timekeeper, I will move now mm -hmm. to, to Louis and the, the OECD. We move from Luxembourg to, to Paris. And the OECD has this quality of being a unique observatory for cross-country comparison with an amazing experience stretching across. And I wanted to ask you one thing, Louis. Uh, normally, when we talk about labels, uh, and more in the mortgage market, we point to sustainability as a response to sustainability. But there is also another set of problems that we need to address through the renovation, which is the problems of affordability of housing. So the OECD has a lot of research and experience there. Can you bring us this angle into this in the discussion, Luis? Thank you very much, uh, uh, Stefano. Uh, good morning, uh, um, Commissioner Simpson, uh, State Secretary Galamba, Luca, colleagues. It's really a great pleasure to be here, and thanks, Stefano, for your uh, for your kind words of uh, of introduction. Now, indeed, at the OECD, we've been working um, over the last two years on a toolkit for uh, for housing policies uh, for countries that would basically help uh, policymakers. Uh, deal with some of the challenges that we are talking about. Now, you mentioned the sustainability one, that's first and foremost in the discussions today, but there is also the issue of, uh, of affordability. Let, let me give you uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, insights on that, uh, because the point I wanted to make today is, is, is really the potential that the label has uh, to make or to facilitate progress on those two fronts, not only the sustainability uh, front, but also the affordab affordability one. In terms of affordability, I think it's fair to say that access to affordable housing uh, is one of the uh, the key challenges that uh, many of our uh, our our countries are, are are facing these days. Just to give you a number, if you look at OECD countries on average, um, middle income households, let's say the middle class, spends about 30 percent of its budget uh, on housing, housing related expenditures, rent, and 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 and, and so on. If you look at disadvantaged groups, uh, then that share is, is much higher. Uh, and then we are talking about groups that have an even more difficulty uh, to meet uh, uh, their, uh, their, their consumption needs in terms of energy. They also tend to live in poor quality housing, uh, far from homes uh, with, uh, with implications for, uh, for, uh, uh, for well-being, as you can imagine. Uh, so a big challenge there in terms of making house more affordable. The sustainability angle, we, we heard some big numbers already from a Commissioner Simpson. I just wanted to, to highlight uh, some of those. 28% uh, of final energy consumption, this is the residential sector, not only including all buildings and all segments in the market, but only residential, 28% uh, of energy consumption. Uh, we've done uh, um, uh, work on, uh, on uh, for instance, uh, whether or not countries have mandatory building energy codes. And, uh, and about two thirds of the countries in the world don't have any mandatory standards uh, in that area. So huge implication also uh, for, um, for sustainability. It was already mentioned the need for renovation in Europe. 80% of the European stock of buildings is at least 30 years old. So when you think of standards and the qualities up, uh, um, uh, improvements, uh, that technology has uh, has provided over the last 30 years, essentially 80% of our buildings uh, uh, potentially uh, don't have that and would need to be to be renovated. So I'm mentioning all this just to, 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 to stress this point that the label really has the potential uh, to facilitate progress in these two areas. And why is that? Well, for two reasons. One is, as Luca mentioned at the beginning, it, it creates incentives for investment uh, in the energy performance of our buildings. And at the same time, it lowers the cost of borrowing. 
for homeowners. Most people borrow to buy a home. Uh, most businesses have to also uh, 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 look for finance uh, to renovate their, uh, their buildings and so on. So really an important point that we can uh, think of that as a, as a win-win uh, potential for, um, uh, 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 for tackling those two very important challenges that we are facing today. And ultimately, it's about improving real estate finance. Uh, um, that's essential for housing markets uh, because, as I said, people borrow to, to buy a home. It's also essential uh, for, uh, for commercial property. And it's about improving real estate finance because we can then diversify the range of instruments that are available uh, and at the same time uh, make sure that there is a market segment there that can be developed that has huge potential uh, to grow uh, in, the, in the years to come. Let me, uh, and I'll end here, Stefano, just to stress another that I think Luca alluded to at the beginning, uh, and that is particularly important here, that the label also contributes in a very practical manner. Um, in the area of data collection, this is extremely important for the analysis of green mortgage performance, but also in the transparency of the gathering, the processing, the disclosure of data, that is also essential uh, for this uh, for these instruments to develop and for this market segment uh, to grow. So uh, very important contributions, uh, huge potential in this area. And we, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, wish you uh, all the best uh, in, in taking this work forward uh, and congratulate uh, uh, Luca and colleagues uh, uh, for, uh, for this initiative, a very important achievement that we are, we are celebrating today and hope to, uh, to continue to support you. Uh, in the uh, in the further steps of this initiative. Thank you, Luis. I think you're spot on on the issue of uh, affordability and energy poverty. We have a line in the renovation wave that says in inefficiency is synonymous with energy poverty and social problems. Uh, you also have a lot of direct experience in, in, in best practices. Can you point to in one minute to a couple of good examples at national level? that can give us hope. Very important point, Stefano. Thanks for bringing it up because it's really energy poverty connects the affordability, the sustainability, probably better than any other angle. Let me start with a number. Um, if you look at uh, low income households, on average in OECD countries, one in five report having difficulty uh, heating their homes in Europe. So it is, a, it is a huge number, it's a huge issue. The, the shares vary a lot, you can think of 40% in Bulgaria or Lithuania, and, uh, and less than 5% in Austria and Sweden. But even the countries that are doing well still have a share of the population that reports uh, in energy uh, poverty. Energy poverty is about incomes, low incomes, but it's also obviously about, uh, about uh, uh, energy performance and the performance of the dwellings for people people live. And that's an area where I think the label can also help. It can help by lowering spending on energy, by especially by disadvantaged uh, households, and allowing finance on improvements of energy performance, of renovation, and so on. You mentioned about specific cases. I wouldn't do, be able in one minute to do justice to the many interesting cases uh, that, uh, that, 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 that we see in Europe. But just me, that, allow me to mention just one aspect where there is a lot of potential. Take the case of social housing. Uh, countries that invest in social housing, and in some countries uh, uh, in the OECD area, social housing can account for, for almost 25% of the total stock of dwellings. So huge scope there to use policies of social housing as a mechanism for energy, uh, to invest in the energy improvement of buildings. So that has an impact directly on, uh, on energy poverty, huge potential to reduce it because people who tend to have housing also tended to be in that situation of, uh, of potentially being in, 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 in energy poverty, uh, but also through the demonstration effect that it creates. If the government starts by demonstrating its commitment to renovate to improvement in energy performance, then that can unlock opportunities then uh, for the private sector, for the construction sector uh, to do the same. So I will just mention that uh, as an area where uh, uh, there is a lot of scope uh, for uh, leveraging efforts uh, on the part of the public sector uh, to improve uh, energy performance and actually tackle the issue of energy poverty at the same time. 
Thank you, Luis. Uh, and now with, I will ask the Gab for help. With a small focus on the end of financial capital, financial financial building. So you are a front runner there. And uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, there is a lot of discussion inside and outside the Commission on whether we should change uh, our regulatory framework in, in support of industry-driven initiative, the mortgage credit directive, the consumer credit directive, the capital requirements directive. What's your view? What's your experience? Uh, how can regulation uh, uh, interact and interplay with uh, an initiative like the, the label? Okay, good morning. Um, it's also a great pleasure for me to be part of this discussion. Actually, the Central Bank of Hungary is a part of EMI's uh, advisory board, and I can really say that we profit a lot from this from this um, forum. And just getting back to your question, Stefano, uh, yes, indeed, as a financial regulator, um, we have introduced uh, special temporarily um, capital requirement discounts for certain green exposures among them, firstly, energy efficient mortgages. Why? Because we very strongly believe that uh, there won't really be a breakthrough in, in sustainable finance uh, uh, without well-targeted uh, incentives and, and uh, support measures. But of course, for any kind of, uh, of an incentive, if you really want to design it well, the very first uh, precondition is, is a good uh, solid product definition, which is um, sufficiently ambitious to avoid uh, greenwashing. But at the same time, it also needs to be realistic so that really uh, market players can develop business about, uh, about the product. And we really think that uh, EMI is, is uh, striking a, a very good balance in this respect. I think a product um, um, label is also helpful from a regulatory point of view because it all allows uh, data collection. And of course, if you have data, then you can really base uh, your regulation on evidence. And of course, uh, EU banking regulation in line with the Basel uh, principles is, is, is tries to be as evidence based as possible. So again, um, I think from this respect, uh, um, the energy efficient mortgage label is a very important step. Um, I personally, and we as a central bank very much agree that ESG factors need to be integrated into uh, banking regulation in the EU framework um, and also into banking supervision just like it is already in the capital right requirements regulation for the mandate to the European Banking Authority. But of course, the question is still there. So should uh, EU banking regulation um, offer a special treatment for green loans, for energy efficient mortgages? Or should there be a special treatment for non-energy efficient uh, mortgages for brown lending? And of course, this debate is still out. This, this is for the upcoming uh, period years. But again, I would just like to highlight that Simply the fact that now we have the, the energy efficient mortgage label, and of course, there is a let's not forget that there's a, there's a data collection exercise attached to this uh, product. I think it's, it will be a very important contribution to this, to this uh, EU uh, debate about uh, how to incorporate sustainability into the European uh, banking regulatory framework. Thank you, Gabor. And uh, I think you, you, you bring to the table another important perspective, if I may, uh, from, from where you are. Uh, because you're, uh, again, you're, you're, the place you are is a good observatory on the central and European uh, mortgage markets. And I saw in the list of 23 banks today that there are already quite a few examples. I saw Slovakia, I saw others. Uh, what's your what's your impression? Uh, what is is needed, uh, and what is going to happen in the Central and Eastern European mortgage market, uh, and how the label? Uh, what's your uh, prognosis on the the uptake of a label, for instance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Uh, well, actually, coming from Central Eastern Europe, for me it was great to see uh, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Roman, Romania, and also. A Polish bank in the early birds of the, of the label. I think it's a, it's a very, very uh, positive development from a CE perspective as well. So it's, it's really shows that this is a, this is a European initiative. Um, in Hungary, uh, I can really say that uh, it's no surprise, I guess, that we also have a very, very outdated building stock. So there is a very uh, 
huge need for a renovation wave also for Hungarian uh, buildings. Um, and I think um, the early signs are very promising in Hungary. So also in Hungary, two banks have uh, joined uh, EMI, uh, I mean the organization, but they are still developing uh, energy efficient mortgage products. So and they, are, uh, they still need a, work, a lot of work to do. They are also, some of our Hungarian banks are working on uh, issuing green covered bonds. So, so cover bonds, which finance energy efficient mortgages uh, on the asset side. Um, so I think the perspective is, is very good, uh, but not, not everything is rosy. We also see that, for instance, banks have, uh, have challenges with ex accessing energy efficiency data, especially for the existing stock. For instance, we also need to work a lot with, with consumers, with borrowers. So we, I think um, um, we need to make sure that borrowers understand the economics of an energy efficient mortgage that basically what you can save on your utility costs can help you to meet your mortgage payments again i think that's that's i think a very good uh, piece of economics but uh, borrowers need to understand it properly so that they can take um, um, well founded decisions to take on debt for instance to renovate their their flats so uh, in short i think um, i think there are very good signs uh, in, in central eastern europe also in Hungary, but I think it's still a long way to go. And again, I think uh, today, I mean, the launch of the energy efficient mortgage label is again a big step on this long and bumpy road. Thank you very much, Gabor. As President Juncker taught me, it's very important that in, in European policies and strategies, there are not second and first class uh, uh, categories. So it's very for us, it's very important that the innovation wave is a pan-European project, and what you say about the prospects in Central East European market is, is, is quite encouraging. I turn now to Dane, and she's done a lot of work at the Official Monetary uh, and Financial Institutions Forum on the role of self run banks and, 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 and the role of regulators in addressing climate risks in the financial system. And uh, I think this morning we all opened the newspapers and we saw the European Central Bank uh, announcing that, or uh, indicating, hinting that in their strategic review, uh, they're going to do much more. They're probably touching on the principle of market neutrality and doing a lot about more about a, a encouraging uh, green financing through their bond purchasing program. So you're really a, a great speaker for us today. But my question is picking up what someone said in 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 the previous. Uh, uh, interventions that uh, energy efficiency risks are also environmental risks and they all become financial risks uh, down the line uh, and it's much easier than if you have uh, good mortgages linked to energy efficiency to ensure also that uh, uh, the uh, the loans are repaid uh, so you have done a lot of work about this nexus between environmental risks and uh, financial risks uh, and lending policies. What you can tell us about this uh, about this link? Thank you, Stefano. Good morning. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here with all of you. Thank you very much to the European Mortgage Federation and to Luca for inviting me to take part in this and congratulations on the launch of the label. Uh, it's been great for me to hear all the other speakers so far. It's been eye-opening, very informative to hear from Commissioner Simpson and State Secretary Galama on the European vision on this and also the angles on uh, from the banking perspective, on the affordability perspective. Where I want to come in on this is from the central banks and regulators world, and that's the work that we've done so far. And when you think about central banks and climate change, climate risks, environmental risks, energy efficiency, as, as early as four years ago, that would have been a very niche area for central banks. But now, as you said, it's, it's very commonplace for them, and even the European Central Bank is putting it as a very central part of their strategic review. Um, in fact, in December 2017, central banks came together and set up the Central Banks and Supervisors Network for greening the financial system. It started with uh, very few members and now it's grown to over 80 members. So it's really a very central issue for central banks that we heard partly from Gabor, who are also uh, the MMB is a member of that network of the work that they're doing there. And in their very first comprehensive report in October 2018, the NGFS noted about energy efficiency, 
that they can be um, that that can be a source of financial stability risk because the way that environmental risk can translate into financial stability risk is two, two channels. One is that there is actual damage to the buildings, uh, which can then cause issues to the banks that hold these assets in their portfolios. Or there can also be transition risks, which means if there is regulation coming in and these assets as a result have a change in their value. So with regards to energy efficiency, they noted that um, the, there is a need for central banks to estimate the impact of banks' exposures at risk to energy inefficient homes against the background of tightening energy efficiency regulation. And we heard from the commission that this kind of regulation is coming in now, so it is an issue for the central banks, the supervisors, to ensure that banks are protected on this. Now, where are they in terms of their thinking on this and in terms of what needs to be done next? What needs to be investigated is whether there is a link between the ability to repay the mortgages and loans and the greenness uh, of these loans and energy efficiency is a part of that. And so far, I can conclude that we don't have sufficient information about this, um, that there is no clear conclusion that there is a, a greater likelihood to repay if the loans are green, but there's a need to have more data to establish that. And I think that's where the label can also become very helpful because we are creating a database experience of are these loans going to uh, be easier to repay? And we heard from Louise, for example, earlier about the benefits to affordability, which one can imagine are also going to enhance the repayment terms. This is easy to understand in theory, but the central bank also need to have the practical data to, to back that up. And it's not, uh, it's not something that we have a lot of time to force to uh, to understand time is running out, when we need to green the building stock, when we need to improve energy efficiency, so we shouldn't make the perfect the enemy of the good, but at the same time, when we're thinking about changing capital requirements, or making incentives for these uh, loans to be uh, easier to for banks to, um, to support, then that, that data need to be there. Some countries have already gone uh, in that direction. So for example, in China, the People's Bank of China has uh, introduced so-called green supporting factors uh, to incentivize green lending, and actually um, uh, the green credit, uh, green buildings, and energy saving and water saving are two of the twelve categories of that green lending. In Europe, it's something that is being investigated. There have been some studies to link the ability to repay with the greenness or energy efficiency aspects of the mortgages. So, for example, a study in 2018 by the Bank of England in the UK found that there is a lower arrears frequency for residential mortgages for energy uh, on energy efficiency on energy efficient pro uh, properties. And there's also been a study by in 2013 by the Institute for Market Transformation and also 2017 academic study showing the same thing. So we are starting to get some evidence of this, but it's something that, that more data are needed. And I think that's where the label will help. And I welcome very much this initiative as a member of the advisory council. Thank you. Thank you, Danae. Can I can I surrender to the temptation to bring in some some ancient Greek vocabulary and mention taxonomy? Uh, you've done some work on that, and now as the commission to present our our the, the, the avalanche of uh, responses to the feedback on the. Opportunity for, for our label for an uh, industry driven initiative uh, and how you see the interplay uh, between the future taxonomy and the label. Thank you very much, Stefano. Yes, the taxonomy is an important initiative in that direction and one where Europe is really showing the way in the in the discussions that central banks are having globally. A lot of institutions from around the world are looking to Europe. Uh, as a leader in this field, there is still a lot of work to be done, and I know we have Sean on the line as well, who is a member of the TEG, the Technical Expert Group, and can tell us more about kind of where we are now in the process. Um, but it is something that is addressing that very, very big challenge that I mentioned of where we are now in the in the, in the agenda and in the kind of this roadmap to achieving uh, climate resilience and 
environmental resilience in Europe, which is that we need more data, and the taxonomy is helping in that direction in terms of giving a framework of categorizing activities and looking at uh, and, and incentivizing also disclosures according to these principles. Thank you, Dana, and, and you basically gave me an assist to go to, to Sean. Uh, and the climate bonds initiative. Uh, I think you, you were supposed to bring in uh, the, a bit of a global perspective and give us a comparison, also uh, a global level. Uh, but then I mentioned also your, your role in the taxonomy. So uh, I give the floor back to you and uh, you can bring us both angles if you want. Thank you so much, Stefano. And um, and can I just use this moment to say thank you for my other panelists for the work they've been doing on the intellectual frameworks for change here. Don't know at Omphi for honestly, they've done some fantastic work. And then of course, uh, Louise and Bertha uh, EIB is uh, currently, I think, the the uh, large development bank issuer of green bonds in the world and continues to uh, uh, to open up this market. You know, we, we know what the challenges are. Something like 40% of the emissions reductions we have to achieve between now and 2050 are going to come from the built environment. Uh, Lucas says 200 million dwellings. I suspect there's probably more by the time we count in all the different kinds of building stock. Our progress has been weak. Let's be clear about that. Our progress has been weak since McKinsey put out its famous cost curve diagram in uh, 2008, I think it was which showed that the return on investment on energy efficiency was way above everything else. And therefore, it should happen easily. In fact, we have not renovated our building stock in line with what the numbers say it should be. So we've got work to do. This is why initiatives like this are so important. There is, of course, a strategy underpinning behind the EEM label and what we're trying to do, which is that we're focusing on capital benefit more than the savings in energy bills at an individual household or property level. In that sector, we have principal agent problems. The person who might do the investment may not be the person who will get the benefit, et cetera, et cetera. Here, we're looking at creating essentially a preferential market for financial instruments that support green buildings and giving a little bit of money to the folks at the capital where a little bit of money makes a big difference overall. And we've seen that already with some success. You know, so far in this idea of a best in class property, uh, which by the way is meant to get tougher and tougher to 2050. So if you are a building property owner on the on the on the call, we want to move to net zero carbon by 2050. This is not meant to be a stasis. But the idea promulgated in the technical expert group report last year was a theory of change that had a best in class approach to financial instruments and therefore to property, which will get tougher over time based on energy or emissions. In that kind of model, we already have about $290 billion of green property bonds issued around the world using that poor mixture. That's not too bad, is it? I mean, admittedly, two thirds of hard assets on the planet are property assets. So the gap between the valuation of overall property and the green property bonds is a hell of a long way to go. In Europe, it's about 90 billion euros of green property bonds compared to a total global market of about 1 trillion euros. So we've got a long way to go, a long way to go, and we need to make progress. I mean, there have been some great pioneers, uh, PKO, PKO Bank in uh, LBBW, Vasa Kronen in Sweden, the very first commercial green bond issuer in the world many, many years ago and has gone on to do a lot more green bonds. So we have this thing going, but we have to turbocharge it. The idea behind EML, of course, is to come up with a, a broad umbrella approach to a label that can be used to differentiate, let's just call them good from not so good buildings in a labeling scheme, and then can be used for all sorts of incentives. Um, we want to make it easy for people to figure out what qualifies. That is the intent of the taxonomy, <coughs> how to make it easy and how to provide a common language. That, of course, is exactly the intent of the energy efficiency mortgage level. And we are expecting to see a convergence between the EML 
and the taxonomy. And don't get me wrong, the draft act that was issued in November had some problems. Call it a very narrow interpretation of the TEGS remit. Ay, 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 ay. <laughs> we had some problems. But I think the gossip we're hearing from the Commission <coughs> is they have taken on board the concerns of the European banking industry and EMF, ECBC has been at the forefront of communicating those to the Commission and the concern of a number of member states. And we expect to see a proposal from the Commission more in line with the technical expert group recommendations. Well, I don't know if that's wishful thinking, but that's the gossip so far. That commission updated taxonomy <coughs> will now not come out till April, we expect, because as one of our speakers said earlier, there's a hell of a lot of processing of all the, all the submissions that were made to the consultation phase and a need to rework the criteria in the area of property. But we will have a common language and we do expect to be able to dovetail that with the energy efficiency mortgage label, mortgage label and other measures around Europe. And that will provide a very clear and useful foundation for a common language to grow this market quickly in Europe and around the world. That's the background to it. Of course, that doesn't mean the problem is solved. I mean, having a sensible label, which is what I'd call the EML, is only the first part of the problem. We still need to move on the substantive agenda items going forward. I mean, public procurement. I mean, why should there be a public sector agency sitting in a building that doesn't meet ambitious energy efficiency goals anywhere in Europe? Are you crazy? DG Environments building in Brussels is not up to... These are things that member states can do to quickly shift demand towards energy efficient buildings, buildings that meet the energy efficiency mortgage label in residential and equivalents in commercial. Of course, that's something we should be doing. Simple, easy. Two, we do need to be looking at more incentives. Clearly, the Hungarian Central Bank has shown what you can do. The, Ch the People's Bank of China has shown what you can do. We hope that the European Central Bank with green quantitative easing will follow through on Christine Lagarde's comments and show us what we can do in that particular area. But there's a lot more we can do around this particular idea, which is supporting buildings that are consistent with achieving our financial stability objectives of shifting our economy to a more climate ready footing and climate mitigation footing. I mean, let's be clear here. The underlying story is, if we don't address climate change, we are entering into a period of extraordinary volatility on this planet and our societies and our economies. Some of it will be physical impacts, massive floods on the Elba. Some of it will be pandemics. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has been predicting a century of pandemics as a result of biodiversity degradation linked to climate change for 30 years now. Oh, we had one last year. We're going to have more. So when we talk about the importance of mitigation, we are talking about inoculating against the worst of climate change, which is, by the way, currently what we expect to see, unless we are successful in achieving Ursula von der Leyen's 2030 targets, unless we are successful at making that 2030 target a target for the planet, all the other countries that have now committed to 2050 net zero targets that the US is about to follow soon. So that is the background to why we need to do this. On the incentives for, by central banks, I'm of the view that the valuation argument that the Bank of England has pushed, and I, I remember talking to Mark Carney about this, and he said, you show me valuation benefit, which as Dan says, they have shown in the Bank of England now, I will look at incentives. Sure, but actually there's another issue that we have to look at. more able to deal with the shocks and better able to deal with mitigation to reduce the impact of financial instability going forward, which should justify looking, frankly, should justify looking at these incentives anyway, which is why the Hungarian Central Bank, I think, has done it. Full plaudits to them. There are other things we need to do. We need to encourage new products. 
Now, that's something we can do at a banking level, especially when we have very clear rules about. I do expect to see banks rolling out home loans for seniors with a zero coupon bond to energy retrofit their homes. And the cost of that will come out when the house is sold after they die. Similar to what we already see with loans to finance or refinance a property for seniors, but linked to energy efficiency. There's a lot of product ideas we could do that. But fu fundamentally, most importantly, we need to see a greater collaboration going forward between private and public sector to achieve volume retrofits. Of course, social is where we start. And we have enormous opportunities across Europe to take large slabs of social housing and dramatically improve their energy efficiency. Why is this important? If you do an energy efficiency retrofit scheme across 100 buildings versus one building, you can save, your, your return on investment is about 40% better. It moves you from marginally useful financially to significantly beneficial financially. That's it. Unless we achieve volume schemes in Europe, frankly, we will not see what we need to do, which is large-scale energy efficiency retrofit across the whole country. And that's the opportunity once we have these schemes in place. Now, there are many ways we can do that. Like I said, social housing is one, but we can have municipal schemes, which provide an opportunity for all dwellers to participate in return for guaranteed energy reductions. There's lots of things we can do along these lines. I'm not gonna to go to further detail, not the purpose of this event. I'm gonna put that out as a teaser for you. We have not yet finished the job. Making it easy with taxonomy is part one of the job. Introducing more incentives is part two of the job. And then part three is tackling the challenge of getting volume, which we have not adequately challenged in Europe anywhere yet. That's this year's work. Thank you. Thank you, Sean, for your passion and for the breadth of the of your, the expertise that the uh, that you bring to the table. I think you also point to attention that is, that is there between you know, focusing on the best uh, best in class uh, and uh, achieving volumes, which is something we're still uh, we're still struggling with, uh, including also in the taxonomy. And you mentioned also narrower or broader. Uh, interpretation of the of the rules there. I think uh, we have we had not only very uh, I think very interesting uh, interventions, but we were relatively virtuous on time. And I'm looking at Luca and ask for his permission to have a final round, uh, a common question to all of them, and give a last chance to our speakers to uh, to add something. Luca, can I have your green light? Of course, and maybe we can also, Stefano, after this uh, round, to open to maybe one or two questions from the floor, and maybe uh, after the after the, the, this round. Thank you. You see that Luca is not from the Commission because he has a democratic spirit as a Commission chair. <laughs> I was uh, limiting the debate uh, in order to be efficient, but I think it's a very good idea. So I'll be very quick uh, with my last question to to all of you. And that will be if you had one minute in your view, what is the greatest benefit that the label is bringing uh, to our uh, renovation wave and our uh, drive for greater volumes in energy efficiency of building renovation? Uh, I start with Bertie. Um, I, I would say that the label uh, serves as a seal of quality that brings benefit to all stakeholders. Um, to homeowners uh, by raising awareness for the benefits uh, of energy efficient renovation uh, of housing. Um, it creates this demonstration effect for uh, public sector uh, projects that we uh, also refer to, and particularly this particular relevant social and affordable housing sector. We witnessed this in our own projects. We have financed uh, such projects in several Spanish cities uh, already. Uh, the label facilitates the marketing of green mortgage loans by financial institutions, um, and ultimately it uh, can be included in, in green uh, bond and climate bond portfolios based on the uh, transparency about what's in it. 
Thank, thank you, Bertie. Very, very clear. Luis. Thanks, Stefano. I, I, I think it's, uh, it, it is the, the, the possibility of making progress in two areas at the same time. So huge potential as an instrument for that. Daunting ta uh, challenges that we have, you know, meeting the, uh, the objectives of making uh, housing more affordable and more sustainable is a huge task ahead of us. But it's also the fact that the label uh, by diversifying the range of instruments of finance that we have at our disposal, allowing a market to grow uh, that would facilitate that adds an element to the toolkit that policymakers have. Uh, obviously, meeting all those ch target, uh, challenges will require action across a range of policy areas. It's not only finance, but it's already a huge uh, contribution in the area of finance that the label brings. Uh, that can add to this toolkit that policymakers will have to, to use to make progress on all the different fronts that are needed. Thank you, Luis. Gabor. Uh, well, I think I will just echo what, what others, and especially Sean, has just said. So I think the, the label's most important benefit is basically that it serves as a, as a basis to work further, so to continue all this work that needs to be done to make progress in this field. And maybe just to add one more thing, I think we should also highlight the importance that the label can also um, help to avoid uh, greenwashing, which is always something that the public um, asks as a question, is there greenwashing going on with, with sustainable finance? And I think labels are great ways to uh, avoid greenwashing in, 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 a, in a topic which is growing so, which has a, such a big uh, growth potential such as uh, green lending. Thank you, Gabor. Very good point. Dane. Thank you. Yes, all good points so far. I think we are now in the phase where we're moving from awareness raising to action and we need more financial instruments to help deliver. And I think the label fulfills that and it adds to that. And it's a very useful tool for policymakers. The only other thing I would add is also that it helps with further research and data because once you have labeled products, then you can track what is different about them compared to others in terms of ability to repay and so so it's really useful for policymakers to be able to have that class and to look at what's happening. Uh, and as Gabor said just now, also to have very rigorous standards for how we measure uh, energy efficiency and avoiding greenwashing. Thank you, Dana. Transparency and data collection are indeed very important. Sean, you have a last word. Tough to, to top those comments. Uh, common language but also the excitement of bringing all these banks together. I mean, have you seen the, the announcement? 21 banks already from 11 countries with products associated with this label. That's not bad for day one, is it? Look, I've got a very selfish thing. I'm very interested to see the rise of the green bond market to make visible the investments that are consistent with achieving the climate targets that we have to achieve. We're at 90 billion euros now. We need to be at 900 billion euros. This label is a foundation an important foundation. The only question is how many is it going to be one, three or five? Thank you, Sean. Uh, then let me see now if, uh, if anyone from, from the audience uh, want to ask uh, a question to all of you, to some of you. And Luca, please help me. I'm not sure I have full visibility of, of the chat. Yes, I mean, we have a first question coming from uh, uh, Camillo, if I'm not mistaken. Um, saying that, uh, I mean, why the label is only oriented to energy efficiency? Um, there are also other environmental uh, benefits and risks that have to be mentioned. Um, I, I think that, that's a very fair point. Uh, um, maybe Diana, this is a question for you. I'm happy to maybe support your whoever would like to answer. Then I, I can give some explanation or what was the discussion behind this. But I mean, I don't know if the panel would like to, to take all, all this question. Maybe I will give the introduction to let the panel reflect two seconds. Um, well, um, in the initial discussion of EMAP, 
um, the reason why we have selected energy efficiency, it was to be very concrete and realistic. Is a tangible measure that is uh, possible to you to measure using the EPC, which is, uh, I think, a pillar uh, in the measurement. And banks have to have concrete and tangible benefits that should be identifiable in their balance sheet. So it was uh, um, just a starting point, of course, but energy efficiency is something that could be measurable, tangible for banks, for investors, and for consumer. So um, that was the reason why we have uh, started from energy efficiency. I fully agree with Camillo that, I mean, it's not enough. Environmental risk is much more than this. Uh, at the same time, we have to strike the, the right balance between starting from somewhere and uh, uh, and being uh, realistic. So that, that was the reason that we had. Uh, unfortunately, European compromise are always very easy to be uh, criticized, but they can move millions of people towards the same direction. I think that's uh, that was the purpose. Um, so uh, I don't know if there are any comments, any other comments? Yes, thanks, Luca. Yeah, I can add to that. I think the other um, issues that we can think about and we can think about in the future is also the kind of resilience to disasters. That's another aspect of building that is very important to regulators. I mentioned in my introduction, not just the transition risk of, of changing energy efficiency regulation, but also the physical risks and, and looking at resilience as well. And as we were discussing the other day, look at this, these often go hand in hand because once you go into the effort of making upgrading uh, uh, into the building and looking at energy efficiency, you can at the same time tackle resilience. And that's something that can be more efficient for those looking at the improvements to make it all in one go. Um, so maybe that is the next step uh, to think about. Yes, indeed. In the taxonomy, of course, we do address issues like adaptation or reference, you know, as it's work is underway on that. But let's be clear, energy efficiency is important because climate is the new and present danger. We don't make progress on climate. We will not have a society for our children to live in of any note. Uh, so it is the most urgent thing to tackle. And it's been an issue which has not been adequately addressed in the past. So that's starting point. All the other things are part of it. And this is not meant to be a fixed thing. Let's make this dynamic as we're able to add in more data points going forward in a way that doesn't become a transactional challenge for us, then we should. And frankly, we will. We will continue to work, I think, as a community on this issue of how we ensure our buildings are appropriately robust for the future. But we can't afford to add too much transaction cost too early. Yeah. From, from, from my side, if I, I, I may add from a, um, where I would see the particular benefit of having a label for the energy efficiency segment is that uh, it uh, presents particular challenges, both from a demand side and from, from a financing side. From a demand side, I mean, in good economic times, the priority on energy efficiency um, address may not have been there now in, in crisis times like the one now. It's more the... Um, the um, the barrier of affordability. From the financing side, um, as already mentioned, I mean, we uh, the, the type of investments are, they are smaller. Uh, there are many, many, many of them. So we need aggregation uh, mechanisms to achieve the volumes that, that uh, Sean also referred to, to, to make uh, tangible progress. And um, in order to create economic incentives, uh, the um, uh, benefits uh, from uh, de-risking uh, that can come uh, with the label uh, if um, if the a lower risk profile can be attached to green mortgages this is a very concrete means to provide for uh, economic incentives so that green mortgages can be cheaper uh, than uh, than standard mortgages thank you stefana i see a very last question allow me to answer because i think this is quite important to clarify uh, the label the question is asking uh, about the self certification component of the label and if we are using independent review or external reviewer. Um, I would like to explain why we have selected self certification because the label has the ambitious to be an overarching solution for the market and is completely relying on transparency. So, linked to the label, there is a, a attached the harmonized disclosure template where issuers will start to produce data. With the experience of the covered bond label, we have uh, 
experience that transparency is the best way to make sure that the lenders will actually uh, uh, provide the right information. There is no incentive to cheat or to put the wrong information because everyone will see it. Uh, we manage 2 trillion of assets in the cover bond label. So we are simply reproducing this success that transparency is the only key to, uh, um, uh, to make investors comfortable. And also having a sell certification will allow us to operate in different regions with different third party uh, verification system. Uh, and, uh, and it will, of, of course, uh, reduce the cost uh, of the transaction because as Sean Kidney said, uh, transaction costs are extremely important if we want to have access to capital markets. Um, so uh, I see another question, but I would like to, um, I mean, it's more a comment, I think that, uh, uh, I would like just to propose, Stefan, if you agree to conclude this section of the institutional uh, overview, I would like to thank you, uh, Stefano, for the excellent moderation of this panel. And I would like to thank all the panelists for this very constructive and, I would say, inspiring um, uh, reflection that will help, of course, all the label banks to take action and to move forward. I would like to take the words of uh, Sean. We need to take action. We don't have time to be wasted. That's we, why we have decided to have a virtual meeting and not inviting you in a nice place because we cannot wait. There is an imminent need to move the market and move possibly hundreds of banks to do the same thing at the same time and support the renovation wave. That's we need to support the proposal of the European Commission to make the house of every single citizens in Europe more sustainable and improve the quality of life of the citizens. That's we cannot wait any longer. With this, I would like to thank you all, and I would like to thank the other side of uh, uh, the barricade, the market, what's happening into the market. And I would like uh, really to start to thank all the 23 banks who have accepted the challenge. I, I, I perceive this as a personal uh, gesture of trust. Uh, so we feel the responsibility of bringing you on a safe harbor. Um, I think there are a couple of things that have been said uh, so far in the institutional panel, which are extremely relevant. We need to build an infrastructure which will help the market to produce data. I would like to start by saying that uh, this is a label for a financial product. It's not a label for a building construction or things like this. We rely on the capacity of uh, other industry to produce certification and labels which can be used from the financial markets. Banks are operating and they have to build the infrastructure of the capital markets union from Bucharest, from Bratislava, from Warsaw, from, Lo uh, from uh, Dublin, from, uh, from, uh, from Paris. We need to build the capital markets union. So we need to have a strong data system which will help the banks to enter in this space. And we don't want to create confusion and we want to be very clear that every one of us has to do their homeworks and we have to improve. And we have to improve the market system and revisit, re-elaborate the value chain from the, from, the, from the consumer till the investors. And we have to optimize the cost in the value chain, reduce where is possible by using, for example, digitalization, artificial intelligence, and change. This is not something that will happen. This is already happening now while we are all closed in our houses. If you go and you buy a house, the valuation of this house most probably will be done remotely. I mean, most probably you will open your mortgage online in 20 minutes. So digitalization, not something that will happen, but is happening on a daily basis. I would like to start to give the floor to the issue side, the lenders. And it's my great honor to give the floor to our president, the chairwoman Elizabeth. Who is here today not only representing the entire European Mortgage uh, Federation, but also, I would say, BNP Paribas Fortis, the Belgian bank, uh, but the entire BNP Paribas group. I would like to express the thank you because her intervention has helped us to have one of the major banks on the label from the very beginning. And this has changed, I think, the perspective. If, if we have a lot of national champion, champion, it's also because BNP Paribas decided to step in so rapidly and immediately, uh, showing the added value of this, uh, uh, of this initiative. Elizabeth, you are also leading the discussion 
in Belgium, creating the Belgian infrastructure. So I would like to thank you again for your effort and give you the floor to tell us what's happening in Belgium and what are the discussions in the group BNP Paribas. Thank you very much, Luca. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, first of all, very much for having me here in the panel because it's real, a real honor. We have been working for years uh, on the Energy Efficient Mortgage Initiative through EMAP, EDAP, EMIP, and uh, this day is a great milestone in going and in really marking the importance on the energy, energy efficiency renovations in buildings. So on the BNP Paribas side, we uh, really think energy efficiency is really important. We feel it's our duty to contribute to a better future, to tackle the issue of climate change. And Gabo mentioned uh, the uh, ESG factors, and we also incorporate increasingly these environmental social corporate governance factors uh, through design, promotion, and distribution of our financial products and services. Another thing we do is excluding unethical firms and institutions based on blacklists. We also have sustainable linked loans where we finance green projects for companies, but also to individuals, we have quite some consumer finance loans uh, to stimulate energy efficiency and also the mortgages. The label was for us really important and a next step to take it further to really show transparency of our green, green portfolio based on a real benchmark and based on the European taxonomy. We see it as a key role to contribute to this. So we have, as you mentioned, Luca, three major uh, entities that has, have already joined the label. We have BNL from Italy, we have Hello Bank from Czech Republic, and BNP Paribas Fortis from Belgium. Two of the three are part of our main domestic markets. So this is really clearly for the group a big priority. Why do we feel this is so important? Uh, when we did some research in Belgium, we saw that um, people are generally very aware that something needs to happen, that, the, uh, that climate, change, climate change is happening and that we need to improve this. However, mostly people don't think they can contribute this, to this themselves. And this is not true because in Belgium, for example, 20% 20, 20 of the CO2 emissions come from the residential housing. So it is really important to properly isolate the homes change the heating systems, et cetera. And so why do the banks play a role in that? It's because when somebody buys a house, and it doesn't happen every year usually, when somebody takes this uh, big project in hand, we have to take this opportunity to create this awareness uh, with the consumers to make them aware of the energy efficiency of their houses and to really make sure that we stimulate these energy efficient um, renovations. So, as I said, the label will really enable us to identify these green loans and to also start to measure them in all transparency. On the product offering side, in BNP Paribas Fortis, we do have uh, consumer loans that uh, stimulate this, but also already mortgages. There is an initiative from the Flemish region where they um, reimburse the interests uh, if a customer achieves a certain uh, EPC uh, standards, so Energy Performance Certificate score. Uh, we also have on our mortgage side uh, several types of discounts um, that we apply uh, in case of green mortgages. Now, you mentioned also the financial sector in Belgium. We have been very active since years, I think almost from the beginning of EMAP. Um, we have launched this national hub in Belgium, and I'm the president of the Commission uh, for Sustainable Loans. We are meeting with around 12 credit institutions every two weeks on the issue to see how can we really integrate this in the financial sector in Belgium? What can we do to improve? We regularly have contact with several stakeholders. We are, for example, we organized a seminar at the end of 2019. We support the Belgian uh, applications for Horizon 2020. Um, and we, for example, with our regulator, the National Bank of Belgium, we did brainstorms. We will soon be uh, reporting on the EPC data uh, of our portfolios. So we are doing quite a bit. 
we also had um, studies that were conducted by one of the main universities um, and with the Flemish region that showed the relationship of the value of a house with the uh, energy efficiency. And what we saw in Belgium is that an energy efficient house has 10.6% more value than a house that is not uh, performing well. So these are really important factors and will help us to create this awareness. What more do we need as banks? Um, in Belgium, it is not uh, a given to have access to the EPC data. And this EPC data for us is really crucial because not only because of data quality, but also because we want to have this data readily available in order to advise our customers properly. And so we have been working over the past few years with the Flemish region uh, laws has, have been voters, uh, voted to give us access to their EPC database. Uh, we are now, as we speak, we are um, developing uh, the necessary to connect to their database and then other regions will have to follow. But if there's something in which the European officials can help us is really to make sure that this type of data is readily available for banks because it is so crucial in guiding our customers properly. So to conclude, I would say really the label is a great start. Uh, today is really a, a milestone. It will allow us to identify, create transparency and really measure the progress. And as Ms. Uh, Commissioner uh, Kadri Simpson said, we need to double the renovation rate by 2030. So let's do it. Let's go for it and let's stimulate this energy efficient investment in the building sector. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the comprehensive response. I think you raised very important points. I think the EPC aspect is fundamental. I would like also to take the opportunity to say that we will have the first Energy Efficiency Mortgage Label Committee in June, and you will be the first chairwoman of the Energy Efficiency Mortgage Label. And this aspect will be, I think, uh, uh, in, in the first agenda. I mean, how to collect EPC is fundamental. Also, how to align the energy efficiency mortgage label to taxonomy. In June, hopefully, we will have a clear taxonomy uh, uh, um, uh, publication. So we will be able to assess how the label can be contributing and can interact with, uh, uh, um, with the taxonomy. Allow me to move on to the second uh, speaker, is Roberto. I mean, Roberto, allow me to introduce you by saying that you have been the first label. I mean, UCI immediately uh, jumped on the label with uh, more than five products uh, have been labeled in both Portugal and Spain. So you have all our personal gratitude to you and to your team for the, for the trust. Uh, you not only have been the first label, but also you have been leading the discussion in Spain and in Portugal for creating an hub, an interaction between uh, uh, other stakeholders, institutional stakeholders, but also market stakeholders. Um, it's my pleasure to give you the floor to tell a bit what is your feeling, how the label can help you and what we can do more. Well, uh, thank you very much, Luca. Thank you very much uh, to, to all the people around the, the meeting. Well, um, first of all, I have to say that the UCI is uh, a little bit different to most of the, uh, allow me, normal banks. Uh, we are a specialized lender. Uh, this is not so common uh, in, in Europe. It's quite common in the US. And uh, as a specialized lender, we have a footprint in Spain, in Portugal. Also, we, uh, we have a present uh, manage, managing loans in, in Greece. And we have also a subsidiary in, in, in Brazil. Uh, being a specialist, uh, uh, what we have is a very efficient uh, um, process. And uh, what we have is a lot of data. Uh, and I think uh, to, to have an um, efficient process and to have information, I think is uh, crucial for, for, for everything but uh, for sure for, for green loans and for uh, energy uh, energy efficient mortgage uh, label. Well, uh, I have, I'm have i very proud of, of being part of the of the project. Uh, uh, first of all, EMAP, uh, later EEMI, and finally EE mortgage label. And well, uh, I would like to share with you uh, 
more than technical aspect uh, uh, to experience. Uh, my first experience uh, is uh, something that uh, has been uh, presented uh, by by Birti in the e, uh, European Investment Bank uh, presentation, and uh, it's just to show that uh, being green makes sense. It makes sense in all the ways. Uh, um, I have the opportunity uh, to be in, in Riga uh, with the European Mortgage Federation uh, two years ago, well, one year and a half ago. And in, in Riga, uh, we have the, 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 the president of the European Investment Bank, and uh, they, they, they ask to all the people around, well, do you have something green to do? And well, uh, at this time, I had the opportunity to 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 say yes. I have a idea. Uh, we were, as you know, Luca in in Luxembourg, and well, all that uh, uh, came later. I had to say that for me, it was a very very positive surprise. Uh, we had lunch, a very complicated deal in a matter of months. Uh, uh, in the worst mem moment of the pandemic, uh, I had to say it was April 2020. And uh, well, for me, uh, the most important thing is uh, that uh, if you are green and if you have the support of the, at this time, EEMI uh, support, and uh, now is the EEM uh, mortgage label, then things are, are quite more easy. Uh, to be under this umbrella, for sure, is efficient and is efficient because all the things that you have uh, uh, support in this in this kind of deals. And uh, like everybody say uh, during the, the this morning, mainly is the taxonomy, is the information and the data that uh, you can pro uh, provide uh, to, to 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 all the people around. Second experience that uh, uh, I have in mind to, to share with you is the huge opportunity that we have uh, with the EE, uh, well, the European Emis, uh, Efficient Mortgage Label. Uh, now that uh, we are, uh, we are e Europe is launching what is going to be the most important program of the European Union. That is the, the next generation fund and is the well at the end the the the, the recovery funds uh, uh, that as uh, all the people around knows uh, is uh, uh, well one of the key areas is the renovation. Renovation across Europe is a huge opportunity. Uh, well, it's a need. First of all, it's a need, and also it's a huge opportunity for owners. First of all, for builders, for banks for the society well, and for sure for, for the planet. My experience uh, with the, what the, we have done with the just a little, little, well, uh, not so big operation, uh, what the, I, I received from, from European Investment Bank was uh, just, well, just 100 million euros. And uh, the estimation that we have done together is that with the, uh, this amount of money, you can create around 1,200 jobs, and more or less, you can save the 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 uh, uh, concession of a, a uh, uh, around 4,700 uh, dwellings uh, per year. This means the impact of uh, what we can do what we are going to do under the umbrella of the next generation fund and the energy efficient mortgage label is unbelievable is unbelievable and we we for sure we can uh, we can and we have to do both things at the same time then uh, the only thing that the, uh, I, I can say is Thank you very much to, to, to the Federation. Thank you very much to the European Investment Bank. And well, uh, I suggest that all the people around try to, to, to focus in, in trying to, to, to invest this, uh, 
these uh, funds in order to 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 create more jobs in order to to make the euro uh, greener to recover the the, the growth and uh, to finalize my 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 presentation uh, i want to say that uh, in top of being greener i think uh, it it is quite important that all the people around us especially the politician uh, push strong uh, uh, strong strongly uh, the digitalization this means for sure uh, uh, the Europe, the energy efficient mortgage label is a must but we need to be more efficient more efficient at the end is good for all of us but the, maybe it would be uh, important for the consumer because uh, uh, today we have a lot of cost that can be saved very easily and then please poli european politician push for for digitalization especially in the south of europe because the north is uh, well uh, has a, a lot of experience and can show to the south uh, the, the 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 way to do but uh, again please um, being being green and being digital i think is the future of europe and again thank you very much at, um, to, to look at thank you roberto thank you very much for your kind words and thank you very much for the good work that has been done by you and your team uh, yes i mean be aware that the european mortgage federation is here to help you we want to help you take you by your hands and bring you in this new adventure so we are here to help to find solutions to your problems and, and the entire staff is here to help finance this by uh, with a few projects with uh, solutions we can find. I would like to move on to the next speaker, Giovanni Sabatini. It's, um, it's a great honor to have you, uh, Giovanni, here with us uh, today. Uh, I think that the Italian Banking Federation has been leading, and we see this from the number of Italian flags in the list of the 23 uh, banks. We have nine Italian banks. There is a nice mix between national champion, all the major banks are there, and also very local banks, which is capturing the mix that we always look for. We want to have a local solution and also international global solutions. So I think that uh, in, in, in the numbers of labels that we see in Italy, we keep this balance. And this is the result of the work done by your organization to build the bridge between the institution where you successfully put very important fiscal measures like the super bonus, who is changing the mentality of the consumer. And you have prepared your troops, the banks, ready to give solution at the same time. Um, we are also in Italy, in the province of Trento, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank the province of Trento, because this is the first place where we want to test a real ecosystem together with, uh, um, um, with uh, Scotland. So those two sandboxes in Europe will test the ecosystem and will help us going behind mortgages, but also to think about SME and how we can help small and medium enterprise in these regions to be connected with banks. Giovanni, it's my great pleasure to give you the floor and to illustrate what you have done in Italy. Thank you. Giovanni, I think you're muted. Sorry. I mean, we cannot hear you, Giovanni. Sorry. Giovanni, there is, a, I think, a technical problem. We cannot hear you. Perhaps Daniel can unmute uh, remotely. Daniel, can, can you try to? I think it, we have lost. Uh, it's, uh, maybe uh, we give a bit of uh, a couple of minutes to Giovanni. We move on and uh, we move to another pioneer, Teresa. I mean, it's a great pleasure. You also were in, really in the first labels who joined our uh, initiative. Um, and we are very pleased to have you because you are bringing not only sustainability to the table, but also innovation and good ideas. So that's the spirit where we are, uh, that we are looking at the market. We have to have the courage to look behind the horizon and trying to find new solution. And I think you, your institution has created a kind of a good set of solution. I don't know if you want to illustrate what you're doing from Stockholm. Sure. And hi, everyone. Uh, I take really good 
pleasure uh, in being here today uh, and congratulations to everyone here. Um, and also thanks Luke and team for all the work you're doing. So uh, as a short introduction, my name is Therese. I'm the founder of, of HEMA, uh, but I used to work in banks for many years. Um, so I'm really one of you. So, so just to sort of, and, and I would like to talk a little bit about what we're doing, but I would also like to mention sort of the work that we will be doing in a, in a broader team as part of the Nordic Hub for Energy Efficiency. So I will sort of mention both of those. Uh, and, and starting then with, with HEMA, uh, we're actually a small fintech firm. We're just taking our first steps. Uh, but uh, the problem that we're focusing on is that here in Sweden, we have very ambitious rules for, for energy performance certificates. Uh, so there is actually a very small proportion of the properties who have uh, an A or B uh, uh, certificate registered and less than 25% of the properties actually do have an EPC registered. So there is a vast amount or a vast share of the, the total uh, properties that that need to sort of do something in order to end in uh, end up in this little small exclusive group of, of properties that actually can get a green mortgage due to, to the energy performance certificate. So what we're focusing on is really trying to sort of solve that problem and help move more houses to, to, to become energy efficient. And, and of course that requires a bit more than just looking at the certificate, it requires uh, helping, and that is our first talk, task, helping the consumer to sort of move towards the pro through the process, which sort of includes identifying what can I do on my property, <laughs> what's the best cost benefit, and, and, and also who can, who can do it for me, who can install it. And, and there we have a lot of corporations with installation firms in, in different um, areas such as ventilation, FX, heating, etc. And then secondly, uh, we, we, we feel that, as everyone here has mentioned, that apart from making it easy, you have to create financial incentives and be very transparent about those to the consumer. So there, uh, we're a mortgage lender ourselves, but we also intend to launch in, in a short while a corporation with another mortgage lender, all in all to create, uh, to sort of connect the client with the best offer possible to finance this um, investment that they make in their property. And thirdly, uh, our platform uh, we, that we have built, uh, we're able to sort of, by using new data and putting a lot of effort into integrating uh, with, with sort of, for a bank, uncommon data sources, we're able to, to, uh, to pre-validate an, an investment and also to, to report on, on the actual benefits from an energy saving perspective that is achieved through the uh, investment that the consumer makes. So all in all, we hope that we will make it a lot easier <laughs> and, and also to, to, to make the economic incentives uh, transparent to the consumer. And, and to touch upon the benefits of, uh, of, the, um, of the label, I mean, it's, it's fairly obvious and, and I think it's been mentioned frequently here today that it provides a, a clear framework for everyone and, and that it also, I hope, will create in, in interest and awareness among institutional investors who sort of invest in, in all of our assets, <laughs> directly or indirectly, to, to sort of focus on this and, and also to be demanding on us to, to continue to, to deliver. Uh, and I would also say, since we are now launching our first uh, uh, larger funding transaction that uh, I think it's interesting to talk about this label with institutions and, and sort of the content that you will be able to, to provide. So I think that's very encouraging. Uh, and I hope in the future that we will continue to develop this together uh, uh, to put more pressure on ourselves to disclose what we have actually delivered through, through our lending and really sort of to, to be able to, to show the transition of the collateral portfolio that we have. So very much looking forward to that. And I would also like to mention the initiative uh, that we're starting up here in the Nordics. <laughs> uh, and it's actually uh, a very interesting one where we as a small FinTech will get to cooperate with 
large incumbent banks with a huge market share in the mortgage uh, market. And then we also have uh, property experts, like really, really good statisticians and engineers, um, but also behavioral scientists. And we hope to really launch this project in short. So it's just still on the pre 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 preparatory stage, but I'm very much looking forward to it. And it actually looks like it's going to happen. Uh, and, and the common goal there will obviously be to sort of set you know, new frameworks and to help each other find ways of, of getting data and, and sort of the proof that we've been talking here today. So I think that's very encouraging. And, and you know, on the sidetrack, it's also very interesting to, to see how the topic of energy efficiency puts so different players together to sort of, you know, try to solve a common goal. So that's very encouraging. So we look forward to that uh, from our side. Thank you, Teresa. So, thank you. <laughs> there is a lot going on in the Nordics. I mean, we are, first of all, very glad to have uh, other uh, Nordic banks. I mean, we have OP Mortgage from uh, Finland and we have Stabilo and Swedbank joining. So it's a nice mix between a new platform and I will say national champion. And, and uh, so I, I think that there is a lot happening over there. And would like also to thank uh, Copenhagen Economics uh, that is uh, really uh, running the show over there and trying to, to make this happen. Uh, so a big thank you to our uh, Nordic friends uh, up there. Uh, Giovanni, can I try to see if it's... Uh, if, if you yes. Are, uh, hi. Could you hear me now? Y yes, all clear. Thank you, Giovanni. I gave you the okay. floor. Thank Sorry you. Sorry for this uh, and good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, and uh, thank you to the European Mortgage Federation for uh, having invited uh, the Italian Banking Association to uh, this event and thank you to you Luca for your kind uh, introductory words. As you know ABI strongly supports the energy efficient mortgage uh, initiative promoted by the European Mortgage Federation that aims at developing an European uh, green mortgage market. This initiative is an important contribution uh, in the achievement of the objectives of the European Green Deal and the Renovation Wave Strategy. It helps the process of a gradual implementation of the EU taxonomy regulation. It, allied, it highlights the importance of the collection of specific data on green mortgage and the creation of a quantitative database. It enriches funding policies through the structuring of securitization transaction or green covered bonds. And I'm pleased to note that with 17 Italian banks participating in the EMI uh, activities, Italy is the country that involves the largest number of banks and it demonstrates the Italian banking industry's strong interest and commitment into the subject. ABI and Italian banks are fully aware that the banking industry can play a critical role in supporting the green transition in several ways by channeling financial resources towards green investment and helping businesses to integrate climate-related and environmental risk in their strategies and business plan by contributing to identify the most appropriate and proportionate legislative and regulatory measures to favor this transition by promoting the development of a business culture that fully understands the impact of climate related and environmental risks. The transition towards a more environmental and social sustainable economy uh, requires a common and well coordinated approach by all different actors involved, as you said. Uh, both at national and uh, uh, international level. And let me make uh, an example of uh, how ABI is implementing this approach at national level. As you know, uh, energy efficiency has been prioritized by the European Commission since uh, 2016, requesting that each member state uh, shall establish a long-term renovation strategy to support the renovation uh, of the national stock of residential and non-residential buildings. So, ABI promoted the establishment of a multi-stakeholder forum composed of the main public and private institution, 
and some of them are also present here today, so-called technical round table to simulate the renovation of buildings. The, this forum has a dual objective. On one hand, tackling climate change by improving the energy efficiency of building stock and promoting investments in building renovation to increase their value and stimulate Italy's economic and social growth. Based on the experience gained at national and European level, the Technical Roundtable has drawn up a document containing proposals to develop demand for and facilitate an investment in energy renovation and to address seismic and hydrological risk of buildings, uh, such as the creation of a, a public guarantee fund to finance the renovation of buildings, secure ongoing tax subsidies over the long term. You mentioned the Italian earthquake bonus and the eco bonus that have been uh, quite successful to incentivize the renovation projects. Standardize the information contained in the energy performance certificates at national, but more importantly, at European level. Identify real estate valuation methodologies that highlight the increase in property value after the renovation. And finally, raise awareness of the importance of renovation through communication initiatives. The Technical Roundtable has also published a document, Preliminary Methodological Indications on how to evaluate energy efficiency and seismic qualification of buildings in terms of market value. This to assist valuers in properly incorporating the energy efficiency and resilience characteristic when estimating the market value of properties. But let me uh, uh, conclude uh, now. Transition to a low carbon and more circular economy entails both risks and opportunities for the economy and financial institution. Banks are fully aware of the role and responsibilities they have and are fully committed to support the European Commission strategy and the development of a liquid, deep and efficient green mortgage market is a cornerstone in this process. And the energy efficient mortgage label of the European Mortgage Federation can work as an important catalyst to speed up the process. And in this context, the Italian banking industry is playing its part with nine Italian banks that have already joined the EMI initiative. And we are expecting that new considerable participation uh, will come soon. So, once again, Luca, thank you for uh, the invitation and the opportunity to update uh, uh, you and uh, colleagues on what's going on in Italy, which are the initiative that ABI is uh, promoting to support uh, the EMI initiative. And I really look forward uh, to have the opportunity to meet you in person uh, soon and to continue to work together. Thank you. Thank you, Giovanni, for the kind words and the excellent work done um, in Rome. Uh, of course, uh, the new government will look at the green and sustainability with, uh, with more attention than, even than before. So I think that we, we have a lot to play together uh, in order to be uh, competitive at European level. Um, allow me to move to another pioneer and to move to Sergio. Um, Romania has been doing the last years uh, a big jump towards capital markets union. In the last few years, you have implemented a cover bond framework. You have redesigned completely your value chain, producing green mortgages. Uh, it's amazing what you are doing as a, as a bank, a Alpha Bank, but also as a leader of the Romanian Banking uh, uh, Association. Uh, I would like to give you the floor, Sergio, and asking what's going on in Bucharest and uh, how you see the market evolving. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luca. And, uh, you know, uh, good morning to, to everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it's a great honor. And uh, frankly speaking, it's a, it gives me great pleasure to have this opportunity to speak uh, today. At this allow me to say quite memorable event because the launch of the energy efficiency mortgage label, it signals the single European energy efficient mortgage market. Uh, that's my uh, sort of view on it. And allow me also at the same time not to 
touch upon so many technical details and uh, things that have been said, uh, but just to give it a little bit of a more emotional spin to the whole discussion, because it is always with no doubt a very great feeling when you know that you are doing the right thing, the right thing. But it is even more important when you do the right thing at the right time. And I think that the, the time of launching this uh, uh, label and the time of uh, embarking ourselves on this energy efficiency uh, uh, mortgage initiative could not be better because we, uh, uh, we have the next generation EU fund and it's significant focus on climate change. Uh, and uh, we have all these new challenges that are coming from a cli climate change uh, uh, perspective and from uh, the climate action that we need to put in place. And by the way, uh, you know, doing the right thing is not easy. And uh, uh, it's not easy because uh, more often we are uh, being taught by life that, you know, uh, doing nothing or even doing the wrong thing are the default scenarios. So, you know, it is important for us to keep that in mind that do, do, doing the right thing and especially at the right time is something which should be uh, uh, applauded by, by all of us. And I remember here now, Luca, uh, again, I'm trying to give it a, a personal and an emotional touch to, the, to my speech. I remember that three years ago you came to Bucharest and it was, it was one of those meetings at that time, Alpha was in the process of trying to open up the, the covered bond market for Romania. We were planning the first uh, covered bond uh, uh, issues and <clears throat> we were having discussions here and Luca started to talk to me about this new virtuous cycle or circle with, uh, 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 you know, uh, where we are talking about greener products, cheaper money, better valuations, better cost of risk and happier customers. And, you know, paraphrasing from a movie, you had me at hello, Luca. I mean, that was, uh, uh, that was frankly speaking, uh, uh, probably one of the most uh, and the fastest uh, uh, pitches that I have assisted in, uh, uh, in my life. Who wouldn't have listened to you at that time when you are speaking for these uh, very important topics uh, and very important for lenders, for investors, and definitely for consumers. Uh, as I was saying, I mean, uh, doing the right thing is not easy because it doesn't only require the vision. It doesn't only require for us to have a vision, but it requires also to have the operationalization of that vision, to be able to put it on an uh, execution uh, mode so that we are able to, to determine and we are able to take the first, uh, the first steps. And what we are launching here today, in my opinion, is the first brick that we are putting in that foundation for a better, for a more energy efficient housing market in Europe. And again, I mean, from the houses, uh, from the horse's mouth, and uh, uh, you know, we are one of the players, and it's it's uh, it's our duty at the end of the day to to give you that uh, feedback and to, to give you that view. As I say, from the horse's mouth. In the following meeting, minutes, I would like to focus on three issues. The first one is what determined us to join the European uh, uh, the, the Energy Efficiency, uh, Efficiency Mortgage Initiative, and uh, what determined us to embrace the EEM label. The second item, the second focus point, will be what we want to achieve as a members of this initiative, because we also need to pass certain messages to to this audience and to the broader audience when we'll when we will have it uh, uh, with other banks. And thirdly, what should be a normal set of expectations from participating in this issue? But before that, let me give you a brief update on the Romanian mortgage market so that I make the point of the right time and the right timing for, uh, for us all. Compared to the EU, the dwelling stock in Romania is significantly older. We have 48 to 50% of the, the entire dwelling stock representing almost 4.4 million units that has more than 50 years versus of age versus a 35 percent in the european union and almost 90 percent of these dwelling stocks will still be standing in 2050 when eu as we all know aims to reach uh, uh, climate uh, neutrality the share of households expenditure for electricity gas and other fuel in the consumer basket is by almost 70 percent greater in romania than the eu 27 averages it stands at around 10% versus a 6% uh, 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 ratio for uh, EU uh, member states. 
With the liberalization of both gas and electricity prices for the households, there is a high risk that these expenditures will increase, thus creating a need for households to scale up the energy performance of their homes. The process will be intense, in my opinion, since the home ownership ratio in Romania is also the highest in Europe at 96%, and to my knowledge is the highest in the world at this moment. Uh, another push for this demand is going to come from uh, 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 for more energy efficient uh, uh, dwellings will come also from the millennials and their uh, uh, sort of more conscious mindset towards climate change. And thank God for that. Considering that by uh, 2021, all new buildings should be nearly zero energy buildings, the NZIPs, one can infer that uh, the, the EEM market has a very high chance to hit the ground running, and this is our opinion, and that's why we want to, to be again the pioneers in meeting at EU standard level all those needs of financing energy efficiency dwellings in uh, uh, Romania. Uh, becoming part of a private initiative promoting energy efficiency investments in buildings is a pillar. That's our understanding of, uh, 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 of approach. And it's a pillar that supports our future development in the EEM segment. And at the same time, it's a strategic choice. And it is a strategic choice because we at Alpha, we are a pioneers in that, uh, uh, in that respect. In the mortgage market, we have been the first bank 25 years ago that has uh, 22 years ago that had opened up the mortgage market in the Romanian market. We were the first one to launch a mortgage loan. We have been the first one to, to launch a covered bond uh, two years ago. And we hope that we will be the first one to get full Monty into uh, the green space of the mortgage market in uh, Romania. And, you know, sometimes being named Alpha comes with, uh, with an attitude for uh, pioneering uh, uh, things. So, uh, you know, we have to, we have to, uh, to keep that in mind for ourselves. What we want to achieve as members of the initiative, and here we have a threefold aim. First is to, if I may say so, to speak the same language as Europe does. That is to align the financing solutions for energy efficiency in Romania to the European standards, and therefore boost the trust and the trust relationships that have to be created with consumers, investors, and authorities. Secondly, is to help and inform consumers on the benefits of owning energy efficient homes in a documented way. I think everything that should, and, uh, 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 should have been said was said uh, earlier in the uh, in the remarks of my uh, of my colleagues, uh, we need to rely on hard evidence, and we will get that we will get from the unique data set obtained from lenders, from energy certificate providers, from real estate valuers, through the harmonized disclosure that we want to put in place uh, um, uh, for the EMI participants. And the third thing is to refine the credit risk management tools. And this is something that, you know, we have heard in the first panel, uh, 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 certain views as to how we can build on that and how we can, uh, we can prove the direct relationship that exists between greener products and uh, uh, not, bet not only better valuations, but also better uh, uh, risk uh, uh, management uh, uh, tools. And last but not least, what are our expectations? Again, three things. Visibility and transparency for our EEM products in front of investors seeking to invest in EEM cover bonds in, in greener products altogether. The second thing is guidance for the usable metrics and best practices to document the sustainability of EEMs according to the EU taxonomy requirements. The third thing is actually what has been said before. It's also to use the EEM label for the required taxonomy disclosure beginning with 2022. That should be a normal and a fair expectation from our side. Now that I'm coming to the end of my short uh, uh, speech, I want to refer to an American uh, author and philosopher by the name of Aldo Leopold, who famously said once, ethical behavior is doing the right thing even when no one else is watching. And I want to add here that in addressing climate change and taking climate action, the whole world is watching and the whole world will soon be watching. So let's do the right thing together. And this is a good and a very solid step, step in the right direction. Thank you very much, Lupo. Thank you, Sergio. I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this emotional touch, I mean, when you, when you speak, it's always uh, uh, difficult to, to speak afterwards. So maybe a minute will be, uh, but I mean, uh, 
you can count on me. I mean, the first thing that we'll be doing is jump on a plane and come to Bucharest to discuss how we move this initiative forward and to have a, a real nice brainstorming because most probably when we will go out from our houses, we will have a different world in front of us. So we have to rethink really this time because we have to move together on this, uh, on this avenue. And thank you very much, Sergio, for your work. Allow me to move to another pioneer. It's uh, Mehdi, who is a, a friend who is uh, representing the investor side. I think so far we have seen what is the view of our lenders community, but I, I think I, I'm very interested in understanding what are the views of the investors. And something is changing because at the end of the day, we have to speak to our consumer. We have to package the mortgage. We have to put this in our value chain, but then who is buying the mortgage are the investors. Mehdi, can I ask you your views and how, what you see added value? Hi, good morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you, Luca, and, and the European Mortgage Federation uh, for inviting me to the launch of this uh, energy efficient mortgage label. Um, it is uh, also, as, as you said, the lenders, we heard, we heard a lot today. And from an investor point of view, it is actually a great news having now an, uh, this uh, energy efficient mortgage label. Uh, before I dive into the, the, the label, let me first give a, a brief introduction how we work at Actium. I think, uh, Luca, you already heard my story often, so maybe you can, uh, uh, but for, for others uh, within this call, uh, uh, let me briefly explain uh, about Actium. Uh, at Actium, uh, we don't only focus on financial returns. We want to have impact, so impact on our planet, uh, impact on the climate. And we use our investments to create more sustainable, cleaner, and a fairer world. Uh, uh, with all those investments we do at Actium, we try to contribute to the United Nations Sustainable De uh, Development Goals, so the so-called SDGs. And one of those instruments which we use, for example, or where we, uh, we really like at Actium is the Green Social Sustainable Bonds, for example. I'm myself the head of the fixed income team, so my, our focus is on the on the on the on the fixed income products. Uh, we have a, an, an ESG scoring methodology within Actium, whereby all the bonds in our uh, universe do get a score from zero to one hundred, and this means that. Um, you, you, the portfolio manager can directly see which companies or which issues are are good or scoring. Uh, the higher the score, the better. And green social sustainable bonds do get often a higher score, like 70, 85, so are in the topper range of this uh, universe. For a portfolio manager, whereas in the past we had likely they needed to outperform the benchmark, in the in, in nowadays they have to also outperform on an ESG score. So for the portfolio manager, it's also interesting to buy those green social sustainable bonds. So it's it's for them also attractive. And this analysis of the green bonds is done by our ESG team. We have a big ESG team at Actium. And for the covered bonds, for example, where we invest in, it was not always easy to do an analysis. And we think, or I think from an investor point of perspective, this energy label definitely will make life easier. It will also improve uh, um, for example, the, the, the analysis, it makes easier. The reporting from the issuer side will improve because they will be more transparent. We can see as an investor, okay, which, which uh, the use of proceeds and the transparency, which is key for us to see exactly uh, within the covered bond, uh, covered bond market, which bonds are uh, actually uh, really energy efficient. And, and as, as, as said earlier by several speakers during this, uh, there are a lot of difference within Europe between different countries with EPC, etc., and uh, we think this this label, uh, yeah, does help the investors and especially uh, does uh, also prevent uh, greenwashing, for example. So, uh, from uh, my point of view, and I think a lot of investors will uh, agree on that. We hope that as many banks as possible adopt this energy efficient mortgage label and uh, and, and use uh, also the the harmonized disclosure template and. Actually, as you, as you said, Luca, and hopefully they can start already today because the sooner the better. Uh, because I know uh, from myself, but uh, besides Actium, there are a lot of other investors here in the Netherlands, but I, I have traveled around uh, uh, like you did, uh, uh, 
uh, Luca. And, and there is from the investor side a huge demand for sustainable bonds, green investments. And this new label does definitely help to, to grow this segment or does help this segment. And, and, and it, it helps it to grow further. And, and as Actium, as a sustainable investor, as we call ourselves, we definitely do support this initiative. And, and, and we thank you for, for, for doing this. In, and, and we definitely support you on that show. Uh, perspective it is also a, a big day and uh, unfortunately we cannot be and, and, and celebrate it but uh, again many thanks and and um, uh, yeah that's uh, from in investors um, yeah you have our support and uh, we are really positive uh, having this label now uh, thank you Mehdi, for what you are doing because you are changing the market i mean investors like you are really giving clear indication we fully accept the challenge of producing data, but we need that this is something that we cannot wait anymore and we need to make this as soon as possible. In this label, just to let you know and to be precise, we gave a few months of tolerance to our banks because we know how difficult it is, but at the same time, we ask the banks to produce data as soon as they can. So we will try to make all our effort. We are working with them. We try to solve their issues. I mean, for example, there is some GDPR issue. We are trying to do legal opinions to support them in producing data. We would like also to thank all our partners that are working on the data construction, IPOPORT, European Data Warehouse, TXS, CRIF, but also university like the University of Venice or, or SAFE that are supporting our effort to help banks in producing data because it's, we know that it's fundamental for you, but also for international investors that are buying our cover bonds from Indonesia, from China, and, and so on. Um, Allow me to introduce uh, another pioneer, Aeon, who has been part of uh, our initiative since uh, the very beginning. We believe that utilities can play a very important role, especially in two areas. Speak with consumers, they are the way how we can create a real benefit for consumer, but also in production data for many. That's something where utilities could help banks. Sharing the cost, sharing the burden of producing data can really be a way to optimize the market value chain, as we uh, have been discussing so far. Discussing so far. Uh, Alex, it's a great pleasure to have you and allow me to thank you and your team for the great effort and the great uh, cooperation that you have had during our Horizon 2020 project. Thank you very much for being with us this, uh, this afternoon now. Sorry. Thank you very much, Luca. Uh, and I find the discussion extremely valuable and inspiring so far. So, a pleasure to be here. I bring indeed a different angle in the consortium, that of uh, utilities and energy solution players. And our vision at the on is to, to make the energy transition affordable and easy for everyone. Therefore, uh, we are bringing the voice of the customers to the forefront of the energy efficiency, efficiency mortgage initiative. So, finance, it's already an essential part of our offering. In some markets, uh, more than half of our sales are enabled by financing. And our experience so far shows that uh, what customers appreciate is the transparency in terms of pricing and quick and smooth online customer journey uh, to get the approval of the loan. And um, the voice of the customers, it's at the core of the product designs uh, in our company. And this is exactly what we want to bring in this consortium. We want to, uh, uh, to design new green mortgage products, which is uh, meeting the customer expectations. So building new and renovating homes with a new energy efficient mortgage will bring lower energy bills to customers, lower mortgage rates, and reduce the CO2 emissions across all the homes in Europe. And as the previous speaker said, reducing CO2 emissions is very important and urgent matter. And um, our goal is to accelerate this transition to, to better insulated house, to, to local energy generation and storage in the homes, energy efficient uh, heating and cooling, and not last the electric car charging, which is uh, also something which is coming. And it's part of the new houses. Um, green mortgage label should bring standardization in a very fragmented market. And here I'm not talking only about the financing part, but also about the ecosystem of uh, devices, assets, and the way we sell and install and we manage. And thereof, it's important and crucial, I would say, to digitize the, the new infrastructure and to complement the installation with um, software 
which is allowing new services, enabling energy communities, enabling automation of the home energy optimization, connection to the grid, performance monitoring and remote steering. And uh, we did a research before in 2018, and we discovered that for customers, it's important to have lower energy bills, lower mortgage rates and comfortable homes without, of course, uh, increasing the, uh, the emissions. And now we are running a new study uh, during next months and uh, towards quarter three, we will deliver the results in uh, eight countries, U UK, Italy, Sweden, Netherlands, uh, Romania, Poland, Spain and Portugal. And it's important that to be prepared to, to listen to customers' needs and preferences and to sketch something which is uh, responding to, to this. Thank you very much, Luca. Thank you, Alex. Uh, allow me to highlight the consumer research that you are doing together with us in different regions in Europe. I think this is extremely important. As I said at the beginning, we have two problems. The demand is changing and the supply is disrupted. So we have to fix both issue and understanding where the consumer demand is going is crucial to develop a good uh, product. Um, I would like to thank all the speakers of this panel. Um, I, we are running a bit uh, uh, long in terms of uh, timing. I'm very sorry for this. Uh, I've seen that there are a few questions in the chat. I would like to answer to some of these uh, uh, questions because I think they are quite relevant. Um, I think very kindly there was a, a question, um, uh, Michael, I think, from uh, um, who was asking uh, why we have an, a an HDT and HTT, an harmonized disclosure template and an harmonized transparency template for cover bonds. Well, thank you very much for this question because this is a crucial thing. I mean, we want to optimize the value chain for banks. So the effort that should be done by the asset side should be useful also for tapping the capital markets with instruments like cover bonds. So we want to make this effort absolutely aligned, but they are two different instruments because most probably a bank will cover with the harmonized disclosure template, the entire mortgage portfolio. And this actually is linked to what Teresa said. This will give transparency of what kind of funding tools you are using because you can use cover bonds. And in that case, you have an HTT already ready to be used for your port cover bond pool, but you can use a securization, you can use a senior and secured or other instrument. So the energy efficiency mortgage um, initiative wants to be a pillar for capital markets union. We want the banks to use more and more a capital markets instrument to support their access and the optimization of the funding cost. Um, we believe also that uh, a diversification of the investor base is a crucial element uh, for bringing a real benefit to lenders. The real benefit of the label for me can be seen in three big drivers. A big marketing advantage for banks, they will position themselves as pioneer as banks make driving the change. The second big benefit for me could come by macroprudential treatment of capital charges. So capital, uh, the capital framework, the CRR can be capturing our, uh, our work of the correlation between energy performance and credit risk. And then the third big driver for me, it will be the funding cost advantage that we can create by using cover bond or securization and the diversification of the investor base. So, Michael, I hope that I answered to your question. Uh, my staff, I mean, we have Daniele who is doing an excellent work uh, on this, but the entire staff is working since days to try to, to, to respond to all your requests. But we are, um, so a big thank you to my staff for the excellent work that has been done so far. But we are happy to answer, so please just write to us. And uh, I would like to draw to a conclusion. If you have more questions, please come back to us. Um, I would like to thank in particularly Elizabeth and Roberto. It was a, a very difficult journey based on trust, on believing in crazy ideas, because as Sergio has highlighted, I mean, uh, there was no consensus. I mean, when we change, you have always to, to take difficult decisions. But today we are offering on the plate of the European Commission a very important market tool, uh, which is the label. But more important, more importantly, we are offering a commitment, an engagement of a group of pioneers, a green family ready to change. 
we don't know if the label convention is the right one. Most probably we will change it. But we know that we can do it all together, working hands in hands with other industries to make Europe a better place. Because that's Europe, a place where we can have the opportunity to have a better life. And the better life starts with a better house. So please help us in making your house, your house of your neighbor, a better place to live and to make this Europe stronger, more united and more tolerant. Thank you very much for all of you for the participation today, for the great support and to my entire team for the amazing work that has been done for creating this event. Thank you all. We invite you to join us at the end of October in Rome. I promise you will not be a virtual meeting and we'll do our best to welcome you after two years of pandemic life. Believe me, we will do our best to welcome all of you in a proper meeting. Thank you all and have a lovely weekend and rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.